Good morning from the east end of Glasgow. We're on Celtic Way to pay our respects to a footballing giant. This week, the great Billy McNeil passed away aged 79, but Celtic's most decorated captain will never be forgotten. In fact, stories about this man will be told for generations because his achievements here were nothing short of remarkable. 31 trophies secured between spells as player and manager. He led the team to nine in a row and surely his greatest moment of all, the European Cup success back in 1967 with the Lisbon Lions. Billy McNeil, a leader, a legend, a man loved by so many, but perhaps most importantly, a man respected by all. Good win, it's a goal, a goal by McNeil. Billy McNeil has scored. McNeil, it's a goal by McNeil, as he's done so often for Celtic. Some amazing footage there from an incredible career and thank you very much to Celtic for allowing us to use those pictures this morning. We're with Chris Sutton and Alan Stubbs, former Celtic players, Stephen Cregan and Gary Locke here as well. Chris, would you like to start by paying your respects? Yeah, I mean, it gets you that footage, doesn't it? Um, you know, a lion, a leader, a legend, a man who uh, meant so much for so many people and, and what he achieved on and off the pitch uh, for Celtic won't be matched again but that's the standard which I mean myself and Alan were lucky enough to play for, Celt for, Celt uh, for Celtic but that's the standard which we all aspire to be and uh, and Celtic players in, in the future will be we'll, we, we won't see the likes of that again lifting the European Cup a, a, a team which grew up in and around Glasgow uh, and and he was the leader an inspiration a man I was lucky to meet on a few occasions who had such great stature and aura about him and uh, it's such a sad loss. Another one of our greats lost to dementia. Yeah, as a former Celtic centre half yourself, you must have had so much respect for what he did and achieved for that club. Well, we obviously seen what happened yesterday, you know, when the goal went in. And believe it or not, which is quite scary, the song Giants just come on behind us. Yeah. You know, and it's it's quite poignant. And he's he was a, he was a lovely guy. You know, he was a, an incredible person, leader. You know, you, all the words, you know, it's, he's a special fella and he's never gonna, ever going to be forgotten. Um, you know, what he's achieved as a player and as a manager was absolutely amazing. Um, and it's just, it's a sad, sad way to, to see him go. When you see the honours list, yeah. it goes on and on. It does. And, you know, for someone who at times is probably very private and quiet, his football and achievements and his um, attributes as a person spoke volumes for him, Dal. That iconic picture or, or memory of Billy McNeil standing in Lisbon, holding that trophy aloft in his own, will never be forgotten. You know, that is unbelievable. You know, that's it's something that still makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. On the flip side of that, I never got to see some of that footage. I never really watched Billy uh, McNeil play. So to see the footage of him being a giant on the pitch and, and carrying people, scoring goals, having that little feistiness about him as well, wonderful to see, but obviously all our thoughts with his family at this moment in time. Absolutely. Terrible news. Well said. Outpouring of love yesterday, rightly so, Chris. Lisbon Lions on hand as well. Yeah, uh, fantastic uh, tributes. Great to see the, you know, uh, the Lions pay their respects, as you know, as, as all the fans and players did 
uh, yesterday and uh, and Celtic got the result. I mean, you know, Alan touched on it, you know, 67th minute, number five, you couldn't make it up. Yeah, 67 on the clock, Shuminovic rises to score the goal. Amazing storyline, wasn't it? Let's look at the game as well because Kilmarnock played a big part in this yesterday. In fact, started really well and perhaps should have had a penalty early on. Yeah, looking at the, the footage earlier, you know, they, they looked as if they played really, really well in the game and, you know, looking at that there, that, that's a penalty kick. Uh, you know, Scott Brown's lucky there. I think he, he catches the lad and, you know, there's O'Donnell, he's just getting ready to cross the ball there. It's a penalty kick, so they looked very unlucky and, and this is a fantastic chance as well. You know, you'd probably expect we Burke to he tuck that away. You know, it's a, it's a good save for the keeper, he's read it, but, you know, he should score there. Slightly fortunate in the first half then. Uh, yeah, I think Kilmarnock had the better chances. Uh, you know, it was a, a laboured performance from Celtic, I have to say. I, don't, I, I think it's been laboured all season. I don't think that this is uh, Neil Lennon's doing. I think it's been, you know, it was a mess. I think Brendan Rodgers left this mess. It started, you know, in, in pre-season. Neil Lennon wanted to uh, make that clear after the game yesterday, yeah, if you it, heard it's him. He's quite right. This isn't Neil Lennon's team. Make no mistake about it. You know, he, he's, he's come in uh, in a situation where he just has to get them over the line. Uh, in the league and you know and, and from his point of view hopefully win a cup but, it, but if you look at last season I think 82 points last season under under Brendan Rodgers uh, 81 this season you know it hasn't been good for a couple of years so you know let's not let's not kid ourselves on you know Celtic need major surgery over the summer whether Neil Lennon's in charge or not you know there needs to be so many changes uh, and he has really impressed uh, what a moment, though. No. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and you know, it, it was meant to be, you know, as if uh, Big Billy was looking down on, on Celtic at you know, that particular moment. Uh, and Jozo Shimunovic did the shirt proud yesterday. He certainly did. What do you think this does for Neil Lennon moving forward? I mean, he was also keen to point out that actually the form is better right now than it was at this time last season. Yeah, I th from Neil's point of view, I think he's just trying to just guide the ship towards the end of the season because obviously they've really the league's wrapped up it's just a matter of time and they're just waiting for the the Scottish Cup final and you know and I, can, I know that obviously what Chris is saying saying this is Brendan's team and everything this is a team that potentially is on the verge of a, of a treble treble so they haven't been doing doing that bad I know. you know so does that say everything about the rest they're a one-trick pony, though, and we have to say that. And I think the Dembele situation was the biggest one. Brendan said, you know, uh, he wouldn't sell him unless he got a replacement. Celtic can only play one way. They don't. When was the last time a Celtic centre forward scored a header? I can't remember. When do they score from uh, set pieces? They don't. It's, it's an issue. And what teams do against Celtic? They narrow up. They say you're not going to play through us, and we're happy for you to cross balls in. So Celtic, you know, in that respect, have work to do in the summer, and they need to pull their finger out. OK, let's have a quick look at the top six now then, because Celtic could be crowned champions today if Rangers fail to take maximum points against Aberdeen at Ibrox. The gap is now 12 points between the Glasgow sides. We'll preview the game in Govan shortly, a 3pm kick-off there. But before we do that, back to our live game. Here's the team news ahead of the Edinburgh derby with Emma Dodds. Thanks, Daryl. Well, the sun is shining here in Leith. Will that be a good omen for the home team? No separating these sides in the three meetings so far. A win apiece and a draw. But today, Hibs can go 10 unbeaten in the league if they are to get a result in this one. As a result of that, Paul Heckingbottom has named an unchanged side from the goalless draw with Celtic. We expect them to line up 4-3-3. That front three, Daler Horgan, who got two goals at Tynecastle in the last derby, and Florian Camberry, either side of Mark McNulty. As for Hearts, well, they're three points behind in the table. They don't come into this in the best of form, and Craig Levine has made four changes. It looks like they'll line up with a back three. Connor Shaughnessy coming into that defence. 17-year-old Connor Smith as well has been brought into the midfield, as has Harry Cochran. And Sean Clare returns from illness after missing that Rangers game. Ollie Lee was the goal hero for Hearts the last time they won here. They haven't done the double here at Easter Road for 22 years. What a result it would be today if they can pull that one off. Emma, thank you very much indeed. Is that surprising, that Hearts team news? Or did you expect changes well, what happened last no, week? I certainly expected changes after last week's performance because we never turned up. Uh, you know, Rangers played well, but we, we weren't at the races. 
Uh, but I don't think any Hearts fan would have second guessed that team, myself included. 17 year old and 18 year old in there. Yeah, no, Harry's uh, had a, a difficult season with injury, yeah. but you know, he's back fit now. And you know, I watched Connor Smith playing against St Mirren during the week for the reserves, and he was the best player on the pitch. So I can understand why Craig's put him in today. OK, we'll come back to that, of course, in a few minutes' time and the build-up as well to the game today. But let's preview the other match in the top six, Rangers against Aberdeen. A bit of verbal sparring ahead of the contest, Chris? Why? Well, I d just don't, I don't get it. I mean, Steven Gerrard, you know, is morphing into Pedro Cascina and, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. Why put himself in, in that position and say that Aberdeen try harder against other teams? Why do you they think they're morphing into that? Um, well, what, why say it? What was the point in saying that, other than to rile Derek McInnes, who you know put him away quite nicely? But I just, I just don't get it. And it, it is. I mean, people who think Rangers have had a good season are deluded. I mean, they really are. I mean, we're talking about Celtic being average. Well, what does that make Rangers, who really have invested heavily in the summer? Let's not kid ourselves. Let's let's say how it is. They've failed in the cup competitions miserably, and they're 12 points uh, behind a Celtic team who Celtic fans are criticising and have done all season. Is that Rangers, good? Yeah, Is that good? I don't think Come the Rangers on. fans are saying they've had a good season. Oh, they I are. I just think they're, they're saying there's more hope moving forward this Blimey. time of the season, moving forward for next season, than there was this time last season. They feel they're in a better place. They've got a better squad. I feel they can add the bar. less players this summer to make them uh, more competitive. I think domestic cup competitions naturally hugely disappointed. I don't think they really believed they'd win the league this year. Was he right but, with his comments about Aberdeen? No, I don't think he is. I, I, I don't know why he sent it. I really don't, because I've watched quite a few Aberdeen Rangers games this season, and Rangers haven't played well enough in the games. That's been the key. Not about what Aberdeen have done. What Rangers have done hasn't been good enough, so I am surprised. I wonder what Ryan Christie made of those comments. Mm, not late. Out for the season. A finger on Celtic. Multiple fractures. I mean, blimey. Really? Mm. Aberdeen have done well against Rangers this season. No shinny today, obviously. He's out Rangers with a few injury doubts as well. And maybe some new signings coming in for Rangers. Jake Hasty, it looks as if that deal is now done. And Greg Stewart in the papers ahead of this contest. Linked with Rangers, three-year deal apparently. Yeah, I think it's going to be, you know, a really important summer for, for Stephen and for, for Rangers. You know, I'd be surprised if Ryan Kent's still there next year. You know, I think they'll, the season that he's had, you know, I think there's, there'll be other suitors, you know, maybe down south that are, that are willing to, or queuing up to take him. Um, would you sell Morelos? I would, yeah. I would. I think he's, he's he has, obviously, we're not talking about ability, but on the pitch, he is a liability, you know, and he's let the, he's let Steven down and he's let the team down too many times this season, you know, and it's, it, when it's in your DNA, it's very hard to get out. Well, Kent is back today, if he's fit and available, I assume, of course, to throw the doubt, as I mentioned. No Morelos, so Rangers might need to make a couple of changes. Stay with us, plenty still to come up next. We will look at the bottom six, 15 goals there, and we'll take a close look at the championship as well, in particular the Staggies, who are crown champions on Friday night. They'll make their top flight return in August after just a season in the second tier. Welcome back. We're in Leith this Sunday lunchtime to see Hibs and Hearts do battle for the fourth and final time this season. Beautiful day in the capital. Hibs hold the upper hand after winning last time out at Tynecastle. More on that 11.45 when we start the build-up. But now let's push on with the bottom six action from yesterday. Late drama just about everywhere, including in Paisley, St Mirren, St Johnston. St Johnston ahead. It looked like St Mirren were going to get nothing. Dramatic finish here. Yeah, it was a brilliant result for St Mirren in the end, you know, when you see everything that happened in the, the, the sort of 90 plus minutes yesterday, uh, St Johnston got off to a great start, uh, it's a fantastic finish, you know, it was a great move, you know, a great uh, diagonal pass there, Fozzie's done well to put it into Kane and he's, he's scored a really good goal there. And then the equaliser, Stephen, you were yeah, watching? I was at the game and to be honest, it wasn't an inspiring <laughs> game, but that lit the game up, that goal wasn't in context with the rest of the game, believe me, but St Mirren were desperate for it, you know, they... I think Oren said himself, they looked a bit edgy first half, they were a bit nervous, there was no real fluency, he changed the shape at half-time, tried to get a spark into them, but that could just be the goal that keeps your hopes alive of getting away from that playoff place. Danny Mullen scored a few important ones the last few weeks. Well, he has, and it's... He wasn't getting in the team no. under Oren at the start, and he said he eventually bided his time. He's got himself in, and he looks a real threat. To Fur Park then, 4-3 there, Dundee. They needed to get something, and it was down to 10 men at one point in the match, the Steel men were, and you just expected Jim McIntyre's side to kick on. They couldn't, Chris, this is the penalty early on. Oh, it's very harsh. <laughs> it seems to be given a penalty. Dundee are down now, aren't they? 
Uh, you know, what an opportunity yesterday uh, to get all three points. And uh, they, they shoot themselves in the foot, had a real, you know, chance. But we'll see in a minute, Motherwell lose a player man down. But there were some superb goals in this game, littered with some poor uh, defending and a little bit of bad luck. And Dundee will feel hard done by. But, uh, but Turnbull has been one hell of a player for yeah. Motherwell this season. But won all the awards, Stephen. He did. Listen, I'm not surprised because... I've watched them long enough, but on Dundee, that's probably sums up Dundee's season. They score three goals away from home, and they lose the game still. Their goal difference is minus 46. So that, tells row, where, so that tells you where their problems are. Young James Scott, another one who's come through the academy, has bided his time, has been really good, gets his first senior goal, so hopefully that'll do um, you know, him lots of good as well. But Alex Gorn, every game, Alex gets booked every game, and he's always on the edge of a red card. More often than not, uh, the manager takes him off eventually gets himself sent off but I mean for the for the, for the neutrals at the game seven goals and a game that some people say Motherwell nothing really to play for absolutely wonderful game all around yeah, that's 3-2 at that point then it goes 3-all you're about to see Alan then it's the red card you just wonder if this is the moment for Dundee it didn't happen yeah you know they put, they put themselves in, in a great position but their Achilles heel all season has, has been defensively and conceding goals and it's, it's obviously come back to haunt them again yesterday you know as you can see there the second yellow for the sending off, which you know, his first one puts him at, puts him at risk. You know, it's and that's even a little bit harsh. You know, to be honest. A few interesting moments, refereeing decisions we'll see as well. That's Kasunga hitting the post, then uh, up the other end. Mm. Kevin Clancy awards a penalty, yeah. changes his mind. Stephen, this is strange because he, I think the referee's assistant judges this ball goes out. Now Kevin Clancy's five yards from the incident. The referee's assistant's about thirty-five yards. <laughs> So we talk about having fourth and fifth officials. We could probably do a sixth and seventh. Nowhere near it. One about glasses. Near. He needs binoculars. <laughs> he assisted. It's a handball, but listen, this sums up David Turnbull for me. And the one thing: twelve goals from midfield. Dial fourth highest score in the Scottish Premiership. Right foot hits the crossbar. I tell you what I'll do. I'll not panic, and I'll absolutely smash it home on the half volley of Millerfoot. This kid is going places. Somebody's going to pay big money for him this summer. How high well, can he go? What's the ceiling? He can go where he wants. I'll tell you the biggest compliment. I used to watch him play in reserve games and under-20 games, and I used to think it's too easy for him. I now watch him play, and I watched him last Saturday against Hamilton. The game is too easy for him. He needs challenge continually. He needs to play at a higher level, and he will believe me. Would he get Celtic level. team? I think he would, yes, generally. What would it he cost would. to get him? Um, I would think at least a million pounds. I thought he was going to say at 10 least. or something. There, there you go. <laughs> at He's least a million. So that could be 10. His old club. It could be 10. could be 10. To Hamilton, Livingston yesterday. And more, more unbelievable scenes there. Towards the end of this match, you expected Hamilton to, to win it comfortably when they were two up, Chris. But there was a oh, fight back. Yeah, I mean, they really fluffed the lines, didn't they? Two goals up. Very, very comfortable. And, I mean... It's never dull at Hamilton, is it? I don't know how they stand the league season in, season out. I think it is a penalty, and we'll see in a moment. Uh, Dougie Imbri, uh, all his experience, tucks it away. And you're thinking, massive three points for Hamilton. Uh, but then, I mean, what a turnaround from Livingston, who basically have nothing to play for. Yeah, Scott Pittman had a really good game, but and that's exactly right. You, you wonder what you'll get from a side yeah. when they're so comfortable in the league, yet yeah, they scored three straight goals. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest disappointment for Hamilton, their first two games after the split, we're both at home and they've only picked up two points. They would have looked at that and thought, if we can get three or four or even six points for that, we can almost guarantee our safety. They've now got a few tough away games to go, but credit to Livingston. You know, they kept themselves honest. They worked hard. They stuck at the game. And as much as there's nothing to play for, they still got win bonuses to play for, Daryl, you know? So, you know, credit to them. It's Dundee next as well for Hamilton. Yeah, he'll be disappointed, uh, Brian, you know, with getting themselves into a, into a, a lead and then... A, and basically, you know, giving it away. They need, this is the time of the year where they've, they've got to be picking up points, and that's a blow, yes. Yeah, relief at the end, at least. They yeah. did get the point. After that madness, the bottom six looks like this. Dundee on the brink, seven points adrift with three to play. Looking bleak for Jim McIntyre's men. The Ackies do stay two clear off St Mirren. To the championship now then, and Friday night in Dingwall when the Staggies clinched promotion back to the top flight. It's been quite a season for Ross County. Just a couple of weeks ago, they won the Iron Brew Cup, and now they're looking to add the Scottish Championship trophy to this very cabinet. Queen of the South are the visitors, but the Staggies know they need just one point to mathematically clinch the title and seal an immediate return to the Scottish top flight. We realise the opportunity we have. 
we realise the position we're in uh, and we're desperate to, to go and see if we can complete this loop and get over the line and we have we, we points to spare. So uh, we're looking forward to it, but we're, we're no underestimating Queen of the South uh, by any stretch of the imagination there. They're in a fight themselves and uh, we've no managed to beat them this season, so we know how difficult the game's going to be. In front of a packed house, a draw would have sufficed for County, but Queen of the South wanted all three points to help their survival chances. After some early exchanges at both ends, County got the opener they'd been craving just before the half hour. Ross Stewart with a clever run to head his 10th of the season. Despite the setback, Queen's continued to press and Michael Doyle had Scott Fox beaten, only to be denied by the woodwork. But almost immediately after the break, County doubled their lead, Brian Graham heading home his 13th of the season. With the pressure off, County really started to enjoy themselves and Josh Mullen made it 3-0 with this fine strike. And they weren't finished there. Graham with a brave header to make it five goals in two games to start the title celebrations. Occasions like this don't come along very often, so from our perspective, we're delighted for everybody associated with the football club. We were tasked with trying to get this team back into the Premier League. And we've done that the first time of asking, which is terrific. Great with the back of our chairman that's uh, so passionate about his football club. And then I think when you polish it off in the manner that we did tonight, then that obviously puts the icing on the cake. That was the blue sky thinking at the start of the season and uh, everybody will tell you how difficult it is. Everybody knows how difficult it is to do it, but we felt within the dressing room and, and with a, without speaking too loud outside of that dressing room, we had that belief that we, we felt we were going to do it and I think we deserve it. We deserve champions today. Just delighted to finally get it over, over the line and... You see what it means to the players and fans and the family, so everybody's delighted at the moment and I'm sure we'll enjoy it. A right good night. <laughs> Absolutely delighted, you know, and you know, when you see the fans here and the kids and another generation and you know we came up the league over the sort of 24 years and we got there and we had six glorious years in the Premier League and then the sort of knock of going back down and having to refigure it out. So to have a team from the Highlands back in the Premier League is wonderful. So the Staggies are champions after victory on Friday. Four games took place yesterday. Alloa remain in danger after losing to Inverness. Falkirk rooted to the bottom and in need of help after losing 2-0 at Tannadice. Morton scored a late winner at Dunfermline. Huge goal for them. And Thistle lost to Ayr, which means they are still in the relegation mix. The table looks like this. We'll focus on the bottom. Falkirk 3 adrift off Alloa. Queen's also on 38 points. The Jags not safe yet on 40. The relegation playoffs still not avoided. The Pars and Morton are safe. These are the fixtures next weekend. Saturday, the last day of the championship season. Air host Alloa. Falkirk must beat Ross County to retain any hope of survival, but also need a favour from Ian McCall's side. Inverness take on Dunfermline. Morton play Dundee United and Queen of the South Partick Thistle. A massive game now. But full credit to the Staggies. Done the job. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, they're a great club and I'm over the moon for the... The management team there, you know, joint managers, uh, maybe that's the way forward for everybody. Uh, and Roy McGregor as well, you know, he's a fantastic chairman, he puts a lot of money into the club uh, and it's great to see them coming back up to the top flight. Yeah, he's invested well, they've done he the has, business. Uh, my tips to go up, Daryl, <laughs> they have gone up. Back the one that spends bet, the most money. I bet they, uh, come on Daryl, uh, they've, they've done a good job. They uh, have. Don't, don't devalue what they've achieved oh, this Chris, season at Ross County. They would have had a great night out in Dingwall. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't they? would have been buzzing last night. I tell you what, other side of it though, the bottom still oh. looks fruity and Falkirk in a bad way now. When you think of Falkirk, you know, have invested heavily last summer, have invested he heavily in January. Partick Thistle came down from the Premiership last year expecting to bounce back up. They're still in trouble, Queen of the South. So, all to play for, but it's been an intriguing league all season long. Top half and the bottom half. Guys, thank you very much indeed. All done and dusted on Scottish Football Extra, but don't go anywhere. Easter Road is filling up. It's the last Edinburgh Derby of the season next.
Hibs took the plaudits after the last Edinburgh derby, a superb display in Gorgie to mark their first win at Tynecastle in six years. And now they look to reinforce their league advantage over Hearts and maintain their impressive start under Paul Heckingbottom. Craig Levine's men will at least have happy memories from their last visit to Leith. It was back in December when Ollie Lee's goal was the difference. It's been 22 years, though, since they last did a league double at Easter Road. So a chance to make a bit of history and restore pride this afternoon. It's the final Edinburgh derby of the season, live on BT Sport. Kick-off is 12.15, that's around half an hour away. And this is how they stand in the top six. Hibs three points better off than their capital rivals and five behind Killy, who are in fourth. And that's a potential European spot, depending on the outcome of the cup final. And alongside Chris Sutton today, plenty of Edinburgh Derby experience and Alan Stubbs and Gary Locke. Good to see you both. I think this is always an important Edinburgh Derby, isn't it? The last one of the season, because if you lose, you've got to wait all summer. Yeah, it's a massive game. And you look at the league table as well for ourselves. If we can win today, we can go level with him. So it's a huge game. You know, they, they beat us a couple of weeks ago there. So as you say, it's a long summer if you get beat with Hibs today. So we need to make sure that we, we win the game. Your hearts will have been bruised after that last derby, especially in front of their own fans, Alan. Yeah, they'll, they'll we want to come here and put in an improved performance on because it has been a little bit of a stuttering period for, for hearts. You know, I think there's a, you know, there's been a few questions raised about how the team are playing the style of the way they're playing but obviously in a cup final to look forward to but this is what they'll be looking forward to today and, and trying to get a result here yeah Craig Levine was not happy at all with the performance against Rangers last time out not too happy after the last Edinburgh derby either although from the neutrals point of view it was an excellent watch wasn't it Chris oh, it was a you know an excellent watch and uh, and this was Hearts threat set pieces you know they caused Hibs problems but I think Hearts have uh, you know gone backwards in the second half of the season there's no doubt about that uh, Hibs play a better brand of football as simple as that and uh, I mean Horgan made a, a real impact pace and power and a couple of really good goals I mean, it's such an important game for Hearts, and I'll tell you why, cup final places up for grabs, but also, there are players at Hearts now you feel are playing for the future, but what a finish that was from Morgan. Yeah, it, was a, it feels like a brief reprieve almost, that Scottish Cup semi-final now, given what happened last week. Fans not happy again, jam um, frustration. Yeah, and uh, look, I mean, there doesn't need to be any knee-jerk reactions. I think Craig Levine talked about uh, he wants four new players in who are going to make an impact in the summer. So, you know, the summer is going to be really important. Great start to the season, uh, but it sort of hasn't been good enough, which makes the cup final vital for Craig Levine. You should forget, though, Hibs going really well at the moment under Paul Heckingbottom, which explains his team selection today. No changes from the side that drew last week against Celtic. As for Hearts, four changes today. A full debut for Connor Smith, the 17-year-old. He had made one appearance last season, the final day of last season. Harry Cochran, the 18-year-old, also in alongside Connor Shognessy. So it looks like it might be a back three. Sean Clear back from illness as well. Burns, Lee, Bazanic and Whiten are the four to drop out. Gary, immediate reaction to that then? Connor Smith in there? Yeah, um, I mean, I watched him through the week for the reserve side and uh, he was the best player on the pitch. So I can understand why Craig's put him in. You know, it's, a, it's a massive game to make your full debut. But, you know, he, de he deserves to play. Uh, and after last week, you know, Craig probably could have made uh, nine or ten changes because we, we simply never turned up against Rangers last week. So a lot of changes uh, and a big test for a couple of younger lads. But, you know, I think they'll, they'll pass it with flying colours, hopefully. It's a slight on some of the experienced players, though, on the bench. Players like Ollie Lee, who scored here last time, and, and Bozanic as well, in, in favour of the, the youth. Well, I think, obviously, with, with the manner of the performance last week, I think, obviously, Craig was, was, was hurt by that. And as you say, he doesn't just want the season just to fizzle out because obviously you've got a cup final to, to work towards. And these players have been told basically in no uncertain terms, listen, if you don't pull your finger out, you know, your, your cup final place is at, at stake here. Craig Levine did say they were outworked last week. Now, his type, type of team, that yeah. just shouldn't happen, should he, it? He's not going to have that. Uh, look, the, the truth with Hearts is he doesn't know his best 11, which is worrying at the start of the season. You, you know, you could have picked it blindfolded, but please don't ask me um, what it was at the start of the season. Um, you know, he, he is willing to give young players a chance. I just just wonder, throwing Connor Smith in, what are his attributes, Gary? What he's, will he bring? He's to very start? direct. Because I think he, he touched on in the interview before the game. You know, he's no frightened to shoot. He's no frightened to get at people, and that's probably something that we've lacked this season. You know, we've got Bigucci through the middle, and it's similar to Celtic. You know, as you touched on, we haven't put a lot of crosses into the box uh, for a, a guy, a, a striker of that size. So 
hopefully he'll get on the ball a lot today, you know, he picks it up in good areas, he's always direct, he likes to get at people, uh, and if he does that today, hopefully he can cause Hibs a few problems. I think the one thing Craig has done is that age is not a barrier with him, and if he thinks they're good enough, you know, we'll throw them in, yep. you see him with Harry Cochran last season and all, you know. Absolutely, what a day to make your debut here in Leith against Hibs. Right, always good to hear from the captains ahead of Derby Day. We can do just that now because this week David Gray and Christoph Berra spoke to Emma Dodds. And Hawkins! It's a famous, famous victory for Hibernian. It was important to win the game. It's been, I think, six or seven years since we'd won there, so that was obviously very important to, to get the three points. It was a special feeling being able to celebrate with our supporters at the back end of Tynecastle. I think uh, it's something I've been waiting to do for a long, long time, and I'm delighted we were able to do it. I think the, the importance was the reaction from going a goal down to score so quickly straight after it was very important. And then I think from that moment on, I thought we got a foothold on the game. It was very disappointing. We looked back, we looked at the chances we created, but without hitting the target, you know, on another day if we took that way. We could have scored a few more goals, but you know goals change games, and um, their their winner was um, a, on their behalf a, a really a really good goal and um, worthy of winning any game. Hogan, that is the response they were looking for, and what an impact Paul Heckingbottom is having on those in league, still unbeaten in the league. I think his attention to detail has been. Outstanding. He had a couple of weeks um, before he actually got the job where he, he clearly done all his homework and knew what he was walking into. He really studied the players and he knew everyone's name, even nicknames to that point, which was very impressive for us as players. We knew exactly where we stand. He sets out his team with clear expectation and clear understanding of what he wants to do. And he's very thorough in what he does and he gets us all working very hard together. This manager, what I've heard, you know, he's very... Uh very good on the training ground that you can see they're very well drilled. They've got the, the results to, to back that at the moment, you know. So um, we uh, we know what we're facing. We have nothing to fear. We played them at Tynecastle and uh, there wasn't much in the game. And as I said before, we had chances to, to win that game. And so we'll be looking at what we created there and things we can work on as well on the other side of the game. And, you know, we, we hold no fear. Every game is going to get bigger and bigger if we can continue to get the three points. If it starts with three points on Sunday, then you've got an opportunity. So I think it's important for, for everyone involved and the fans that we can get uh, a real good, strong finish towards the end of the season and see how we can go. It's been uh, very frustrating, you know, especially how well we started. Um, we must do better, you know. I see our, ourselves as the top three, fourth club in, in Scotland, you know, we should be challenging right up the top where Aberdeen are doing just now what they've done it consistently and that, that's uh, the standards we need to, uh, to hit, we need to, our performances need to be more consistent. We've got the home advantage helps us, um, but we fully expect a, a reaction from Hearts. They've had a, a couple of disappointing results in the last couple of weeks, so we fully expect them to, to come and have a real go at us because we know what derbies are like. I think the last time we went there, they were on form and uh, we won 1 0. You know, it, it was a tough game. We, we know how difficult it's going to be. You want to play well and win, but first and foremost, you just want to win the game. And uh, when the final whistle comes, you want to be on that winning team and going to, go to your fans and uh, applauding them. It means a lot to everybody involved. And I think if you can get the right results, it's so important for it sets everybody else up. If a hand's going to their, their work the next day and week, the most important thing. And um, I think it's, it's just something that's special being from the two clubs from the one city. So it's important to everybody involved. Captain's always so important on Derby Day. Let's begin by talking about David Gray then, because this week he signed a contract extension, four-year deal. He's 30 at the moment. You signed him. You must be delighted for him. Yeah, he's, he's a he's a great lad. He's um, he's he's very important in the dressing room. You know, he's got the, he's got the respect of of his peers, and uh, you know, and and basically, you know, David was a big part in running the dressing room. You know, I, as a manager, I like the players to to run the dressing room themselves, and he he was very good at that. You know, he's he's had a little bit of it couple of niggling injuries this season which have not really you know helped him but he's back now and he's, he's an important member of the team at his best excellent the last derby and against Celtic Darren McGregor's excelled too you signed him he got a three-year deal he's 33 takes yeah. him to the verge of 38 I think Darren will be absolutely delighted if he can reach the end of that <laughs> <Yeah>. contract <laughs> <laughs> I think there might um, be an ambassador role yeah. tied in at some point anyway but he wants to see out the playing days no he's you know what he's a he's a brilliant professional he's a he's a really really nice guy um, wants to do the best. He's obviously a, he's a high beat, you know. And with his injuries, he's had, you know, I think where he is right now, everything's a bonus because I think they were probably at, at one time 
he probably thought he wasn't going to be playing too much longer. And he handled it Piazza well in the last derby. He did. That will be, uh, you know, a good battle uh, today. Uh, it's interesting, you know, you, we look at the, the contrast between the two sides. Um, you know, it, there's a consistency in selection for Paul Heckingbottom uh, at Hibs and a consistency in, in their performance and quite the opposite um, for Hearts. But also, reading in the paper today, Paul Heckingbottom talking about uh, utilising the loan system. Yes. Um, throughout the summer but you, you know that that back four looks set in stone for a long time to come you wonder about the hearts back maybe three today going ahead as well because obviously Shognessy starts he'll be going back to his parent club and John Souter who did sign a contract extension has been linked with Derby Rangers others yeah I know he's, he's been outstanding for us this season you know he got a bad injury and missed a, a little chunk of the season but delighted to have him back and uh, you know he's got his sale into the Scotland Reckoning in as well. Uh, Would it take a really big bid? Yeah, I think it to will. Get him I mean, out of hearts. Speaking to the, the, the lads earlier, you know, big lad McKenna at Aberdeen's attracting a lot of interest as, as well. And if the figures are to be believed, you know, what Aberdeen are looking for him, John Souter is worth every bit as much as a big lad McKenna at Aberdeen. You think so, he's as good as McKenna, do you? Yeah, I definitely do. I think they're, they're both, the, probably McKenna's a little bit more aggressive than, than John, but I think John's probably better on the ball. So they've both got obviously their strength and weaknesses, but the good thing about John is he's a young lad and he's improving all the time. And, you know, he's been outstanding for us this season. OK, stay with us. Plenty still to come ahead of kickoff, including the thoughts of both managers. Paul Heckenbottom's been a revelation since he arrived. Today he looks for a second straight win in the derby. Craig Levine, on the other hand, has seen it all in this fixture down the years, but he'll expect a response after last week's poor display. Welcome back to Easter Road, just four games left in the Premiership season and the Hibs fans in particular know there's still plenty to play for with the race for Europe still alive and of course they'll be desperate to maintain their league position above Hearts. The Jambos though do have a cup final on the horizon and places are at stake in that regard. Right, more from both of the guys in just a moment. We'll also hear from Paul Heckingbottom, the Hibs head coach, in a minute after a reminder of Hibs' sparkling form in the league since he arrived. I'm on my way from misery to happiness to be. Well, you come into this one unbeaten in nine. Given recent form, do you accept your rightly favourites? Yeah, if that's what people are saying, then, then it must be true. Um, we've come off real good form, as you say, but it's all been earned, so... They're not going to give us anything today. It's a derby, regardless of who we're playing anyway. We've had to earn every single point, so... The approach is the same. If we don't turn up, we'll not win. We need to turn up and perform as we have been. And You know what? If we do that, I'll be confident. And as a result, is it easy to name an unchanged side? Not really, because we've got players who've, who've been in and done really good jobs. You know, we, we're up to everyone back training now. There's been lots of players on the field where they've been starting or coming on who, who deserve to be in the 11 as well. So, no, it's not really simple to do it, but it's a nice position to be in because, you know, you've got 14 or 15 players there who, whoever you put on the pitch, know the job and, and have been f performing to a real high standard. You obviously won your first uh, de a derby match. Has your preparation changed at all, given that you have now experienced this fixture? No, it's been, and, and the last one didn't change to any other game, you know. Questions are different, uh, you're meeting people about town, it's different, of course it is, but I want to make sure that our players understand that we prepare in the same way for every game, whoever we're playing, because if, if you're giving certain games special attention, then you're neglecting others, so we, we want to give the same detail to every game, same effort in every game, and then that way we'll win more than we lose. And obviously, with a wider picture, this could have massive implications for, for a European place getting three points today. Yeah, definitely, and that's... That's another thing that's important, but as I say, you start looking at things that are away uh, away from this fix, you're going to come unstuck, so mm -hmm. same thing, try and get three points in this game and it will put us that little bit closer. 
Best of luck today, thanks. Thank you. Cheers. So many Hibs players we could pick out right now. Omionga's done well recently, Marciano in goal, but Daryl Horgan has to be discussed given what he did in the last derby. No, he certainly stepped up to the plate, you know, especially with the void that's been left by Martin Boyd, uh, Martin Boyle, sorry, um, since he's been injured. You know, he's really come to the fore and he's, you know, he's got that pace that, that Boyle not being in the team has given them. You know, he's very direct. You know, he's got he put some good deliveries in the box. He's added goals to his game and all, which is always important as a, as a wide player. You know, and the big thing, you know, he gets you up the pitch, you know, really quickly, which... You know, that's what Hib, the Hibs team have got. They have, they have got pace in the forward areas, you know, to do that. Took his goals really well in the match. Yeah, he did. Um, you know, as, as Stubbsy says there, you know, he's had a, a really good season. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you need that little bit of luck. And with Boyle getting his injury, that's given uh, him the opportunity. And he's come in and taken it. And it caused us a lot of problems in the first derby. And we'll certainly need to watch him today. Absolutely. OK, attention back on Hearts now. Here's Craig Levine, also with Emma. Craig, there's not much that you haven't seen in this fixture. What are you expecting from today's match? Um, more of the same, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, the, the, you've seen enough of these games yourself to know that they're very competitive and it's not very often that there's a, a lot between the, the teams. And uh, naturally, I, I suspect it'll be the same again today. You've made four changes to your side for this one. Can we expect you to start with a, a back three, the fact you've got Connor Shaughnessy coming in? Um, yeah, that's not too difficult to work out, is it? Um, yeah, yeah, we, we've changed the shape a little bit and uh, because I've made some other changes as well. And Connor Smith comes in, 17-year-old. He made his debut last season, but no qualms throwing him into an occasion such as this one? Uh, he's He's been really, really good in the reserve team and, uh, you know, for the way we're going to play today, his, his energy and his... Uh, and his close control and his and his willingness to shoot um, are things that, that I think will help us today. Um, yeah, I felt last week we didn't perform at our best against Rangers, uh, so that's the, the reason that I've, I've shaken things up a bit. And what do your players need to do out there to rectify some of those results that you've been unhappy with, Craig? Um, well, I don't think it'll be uh, hugely difficult to, to improve on some of the things from, from last week. Uh, I think our focus has to be uh, intense today on, on doing the simple things properly um, and I feel we'll get a reaction from last week uh, and again that's why I've, I've shaken things up a bit. Best of luck today, thanks Craig. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Big afternoon ahead then for 17 year old Connor Smith, what a place to make your full debut for your team. Kick off here at Easter Road just a few minutes away, it's the last time Hibs and Hearts will lock horn this season and it's live on BT Sports. Sunshine on Leith, doesn't the capital look stunning on this Sunday afternoon ahead of the last Edinburgh derby of the season? So much we could discuss ahead of this game, but ahead of the last meeting we were talking about Uchi Ikpiatsu perhaps being the difference, but the way Hibs coped with him that day wasn't the case. Yeah, I thought the, the two Hibs centre-halves that day probably coped with him as well as any centre-halves have seen. Uh, he has caused lots of problems for centre-backs this season, but Hanlon and, and Big McGregor did, did, did do well against them. But this is a different Hearts today. They won't have the physical edge. Haring's not playing either. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we'll miss, we'll miss Big Peter. You know, he's a, a big miss for us, as is Naismith. But, you know, if we can get the ball into Connor Smith and Sean Clare, they support Big Uchi, hopefully we can cause Hibs a few problems. Harry Cochran back in that team as well. But Hibs have the confidence the way they've been playing now. Yeah, they're, they're on a great run. You know, since Paul come in, he's, you know, he's been a different voice that they've all responded to and he's really got a, a tune out of the team at the moment. But I think one of the reasons why... They, 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 why they marked it, it pays me well last time is because if you want to get in a fight with him that's him in his element if you want to be clever and stand off and not let him back into you and hold you then that's the way you've got to play him and I think that's why they, they did really well against him last time last words in there from Paul Hecking bottom at the moment wonder what he'll be saying firing them up but maybe they don't need a lot of that ahead of a game like this Alan when he took over there were 11 points behind Hearts three ahead now it's a 14 point swing I mean that's amazing he's done brilliant he's done absolutely brilliant I think the players have really responded to his style of management. They've responded to the subtle changes that he's made behind the scenes in terms of sports science, giving the players individual clips on, on, on players and, and opposition. You know, he's, he's really had an impact and, you know, long may it continue. 
focus from Christoph Berra. He's seen this occasion a few times. Yeah, he knows he knows everything the Derby's about. You know, he's a fantastic leader of the team. And, uh, you know, looking at there, he looks quite relaxed. And, you know, hopefully we, we can go out today and lead the team to a win. Guys, thank you very much. Hibbs and David Gray have emerged. So over to Stephen Craig and Chris Sutton and Rory Hamilton. No, thank you very much, Daryl. A long wait for Christoph Berra and his team in the tunnel, but you don't need to wait long around here to get another opportunity to have a pop at your closest rivals. Three weeks on from Hibernian's first win across the city at Tyne Castle for six years. They're looking to hammer home their three-point advantage in the Ladbrokes Premiership. Well, it's a revenge mission for Hart and Midlothian as they look for a league double here for the first time in 22 years. There is this isn't just another fixture in the calendar. This one means more, and to Hibs and Hearts, nothing matters more. This is the Edinburgh Derby. Well, Hibernian are looking for a tenth game unbeaten in the league, so it's a predictably unchanged lineup for Paul Heckingbottom. David Gray and Darren McGregor put pen to paper on new four-year contracts this week, cementing that solid and experienced defence. Stefan Omionga and Mark McNulty were the two Derby debutants three weeks ago and now get their first taste of this fixture at Easter Road. Daryl Horgan was the hero at Tyne Castle when he became the first Hibs player to score twice in a Derby in Gorgie since Joe McBride Jr. in 1985. Well, the injury troubles that have plagued Hearts' season don't seem to be going away. The most recent absentee is Peter Haring, who opened the scoring in the last encounter. Leeds United loanee Connor Shocknessy comes in as one of four changes from the side that was well beaten by Rangers. Harry Cochran turned 18 this week and is rewarded with a first start of 2019. Sean Clare pulled out last weekend with illness, but he is back. And there's a maiden start for 17-year-old Connor Smith as the Scotland Youth International is thrown in at the deep end of the Derby Cauldron. Always look forward to this clash. Uh, Hibs, why would they change? 4-5-1, uh, Canberry off the left-hand side. Omionga and Mallon will provide the creativity for McNulty up top. And no surprise that Craig Levine's been quite pragmatic with his team selection. Lots of defenders, the team are on a bad run. Ekpiez, who, as always, will carry the fight for Hearts. Well, every club has its heroes. Very few go beyond legendary status and transcend club rivalry. And this week, Scottish football lost one of the all-time greats at Celtic as manager and player. Billy McNeil achieved it all and did so with such dignity. A life to pay the utmost respect. Thoughts go out to the McNeil family and friends at uh, this sad time. His memory and legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of so many. Well, it will be young Connor Smith to kick off the fourth and final Edinburgh derby of the season. Capital domination is on the line.
Paul Hanlon comes out from the back of uh, Hibbs. Back four to win the header. And here's Connor Smith, touches it to fellow teenager and Harry Cochran. He's got plenty more experience. Does Cochran. The first ball into the middle, fielded by Ophir Marciano, who was excellent last week against Celtic. And I would expect Hearts to start fast, on a bad run, wanting to prove a point. The manager's made changes. I expect an energetic Hearts performance this afternoon. Lewis Stevenson has seen so many of these before. Into the 40s for Derby appearances for him. Here's Stevie Mallon, bundled over by Michael Smith. Be a bit of a change of role for him this afternoon with the back three for Hearts. And they have started on the front foot, Hearts. The high press. Darren McGregor will get it back from David Gray. Craig Levine did mention that he could have easily been a Hearts player at one stage when he did make his way to Ibrox. And just a shove from Stevie Mallon. And it wouldn't be a derby game without four or five fouls in the first couple of minutes, would it? You know, players wanting to make an impact in the game, wanting to get close to their opponent and let them know that they're up for this game this afternoon. Here is Smith into Connor Smith, Michael passing it on to him, and now the two Smiths almost combined, but Omionga steps in, and a loose pass from the Belgian. It's interesting sometimes when you play against a different shape, and Hibbs playing against the back three today. You know, Daryl Horgan's position is slightly different, Mark McNulty, who looks as if he's playing in a wide area, everything becomes a little bit different. I can take you a while just to suss it out and work out where your position should be. Hearts do have that flexibility. I wondered if Clevy Dicamono would be the one to come in, but it's Connor Shocknessy that does step into the side. And he'll take this throw on the left hand side of the back three. That will break the way of Uche Ikpiezu. Well, that's going to be a key battle, isn't it, this afternoon? How Hanlon and McGregor, how they cope with the physicality of Vic Piezu. First Easter Road experience for the big striker. Missed the earlier draw in the season. It's a long, long throw coming in from Shocknessy, but well defended by Hibbs. It's what Hibbs actually done very well three weeks ago, Rory. They defended cross balls, long throws. Of course, Peter Haring did get the goal, but barring that, they were strong, they were aggressive, led by Darren McGregor and David Gray. Fox enjoying the majority of the possession and territory in the opening exchanges. Here's Jake Mulraney. The Irishman has Horgan and Gray for company. Infield to Jume. In steps David Gray. Can't get out, Hibbs. Really positive start from Hearts. They have been very critical of the team after the Rangers' defeat. Here's Jume after a nice play from Harry Cochran. Hick Piezu. Mulraney. Biding his time, looking for the... Delivery into the middle, but he was well watched all the way by the experienced David Gray. Just looking at the back three, I think we all imagined that Christoph Bear would play on the left of the three, but he's playing in the middle, which means he won't get exposed as much in wide areas. But a real positive, strong start from the away side. Connor Smith has done well to play in Michael Smith. I think Piezu's in the middle. It might come to Mulraney, now he finds his feet. Mulraney could only tee up Malin, he was looking for Arno Zoom. Just Positive slipped. start from Hearts. He just slipped at the wrong time, Mulraney. And I tell you what, 
What a nice little touch from Connor Smith just there. And then Hart's bodies into the box. And Mulraney, that's a chance, but he slips. And it's actually well defended by Hibbs. Connor Smith has settled into the opening five minutes really well. 17-year-old making his first start. That slipped through to Omionga, but the flag is up. Tell you what, I thought this was very, very tight. It's a good little link-up from the two strikers, and Barry and McNulty, but he is a yard. That's the first real impact of Hibbs. You know, McNulty, Camberry linking up. That's been their strength over the past few months. They've got to get the ball into their feet, but certainly with Hart's formation, it's posed Hibbs a few problems early on. Doomed to Connor Smith, and now Ick Piezu trying to bulldoze his way through. And Shocknessy knocks it away, making just his eighth appearance since uh, joining on loan from Leeds United. The thing is, Kent Berry's probably happier playing in that role rather than he has done a selfless task playing out on that left-hand side when Hibs have played up against the back four. Horgan trying to break the offside trap. Hibs do have plenty goals in. McNulty and Camberry, but they've struggled a little of late to find the net. Hart's missing their top two scorers and Peter Haring and Stephen Naismith. It's Lamal to Ikpiezu. Hanlon making sure that his challenge was legal. That one wasn't from Harry Cochran on Stefan Omionga. Quickly taken by Stevenson and Horgan. Well, once again, he'd beaten the offside trap and it was just beyond him. He's looking to get past that back line. Now, I think Shocknessy here really just switches off. He has a look. Well, Mulraney's trying to pass him on, but had that ball been on the money, Horgan would have been through. Not a man to give space to. Well, Paul Heckingbottom has made a fantastic start as Hibernian manager, still unbeaten in the league. When he came in, they were 11 points behind Hearts, now three ahead, looking to go six clear this afternoon. And they're continuing to look above them. They can go to within two points of Kilmarnock, which would put them within shot of a European spot. They would be hoping so should Celtic win the Scottish Cup and that would bring an extra European place to the league table. What a pass that was from Stevie Mallon. You're talking 50, 60 yards right onto the foot of Daryl Horgan. You can see Hibbs want to get Horgan in possession of the ball as much as possible. They know he's a threat. He won in the derby last time out. He's a key player. Shocknessy steps in, but Mark Milligan breaking up the breakaway. And here goes Connor Smith. Michael Smith outside him, and he is found in the Leith sunshine. Blocked off by Stevenson. He's just picking up some nice positions, Connor Smith. Cause Hibbs one or two problems there. Smith. There's plenty of targets. Berra is the first one, gets the flick on almost towards Clare. Horgan did enough to step in and down goes Cochran, who was making sure he was getting the decision there. Now he uses his body well, does Cochran. He buys the free kick, which I feel will 
Maybe cause Hibbs one or two problem set pieces. Did in the last derby. He's gone for leg, Stephen, middle of the park. Well, he had to do something, Chris. You know, last week's performance against Rangers was dreadful, to say the least. Lacked energy, lacked enthusiasm. The one thing you need in a derby game is appetite for the game. Well, Mulraney is over this alongside Harry Cochran. Smith back to Mulraney. Didn't seem like the initial plan, but they've maintained the attack. Shock to see on the volley. Never caught it. Marciano with the route one up to McNulty, whose first touch was very clean, second couldn't quite link. And John Suter, he's given that away to Horgan. Omionga breaking into the box. And Slamal saves Suter's bacon. Oh, he gets lucky, hearts get lucky. Trying to play out from the back, Suter. I don't think he was too aware of Omionga, took a poor touch. If he can just lift that, Omionga would have been the easiest of tap-ins and Hibbs would be ahead. The Bernian fans feeling buoyant after that promising moment. And now it's Mallon to send it in. Gray was attacking that, but Hearts can break here and they've got two up in this. Mulraney back to Clare. Cochrane's in acres of space in the middle of the park. Clare managing to hold on to it though, and it's stolen back by Daryl Horgan. It's end to end stop now. Clare tracking back. Got a good fifth foot in to hold Horgan up momentarily. Now it's with Camberry, McNulty in the middle, so too still Gray. And Gray still fighting for it. Well, it's high energy stuff. Stevenson solid as ever. Well, a couple of moments of end to end action, but poor play from Clare. I think Hart's missed a real opportunity on the left-hand side. All he had to do was get his head up. And I think it was Smith who had made a good run. He would have been in on goal. Nick Piezu showing his threat and now turned into the middle. It's Gray's headed clearance. And play on as Clare hits the deck. It's with Cochrane now. Connor Smith gets a strong but fair tackle from Lewis Stevenson. This is what we expected, wasn't it? End to end, both teams going at it. The fans getting involved in the game. There's been some good passages of play, and some poor quality as well, but it's making for a great spectacle. The Hearts showing a lot more fight than they did in the opening 45 minutes against Rangers a week ago. Hibs have had two big challenges to their unbeaten league run of late, but they've come through them with the victory at Tynecastle and then the draw at Easter Road here last week against Celtic. Now Michael Smith. June flicks on. Nick Piezu got a touch. And David Gray. Doing well to fend off Jake Mulraney. Decision is thrown. So Hibbs will just be pinned down in this corner. June going for that one. And Berra, the Hearts captain, finds Mulraney, but David Gray reading the play once more, and McNulty, excellent play from him to maintain the attack, but he couldn't find his partner, Camberry, as Berra got back. This needed to be 
He's a bit more careful in possession there, McNulty. It's a promising start for an entertaining game. Just maybe lacking the final ball at the moment. You're spot on. You know, both sides have got themselves in the good positions. It's just that little bit of composure, or at times just lifting your head and playing that pass with precision. At the minute, it's been a little bit sloppy with that final pass. Stevenson with the clearance, and now David Gray in possession. Mark Milligan. He does that job in front of the back four, can happily settle in there as well. And McGregor to Hanlon. That Hibbs defence now has a long-term future with the club as well, all of them having signed new deals within the last year, two of them this week. Paul Heck and Bottom looking for stability at the back. And then sprinkle it with Loney's loan signings. Which have worked for him this year, even though they were Neil Lennon signings, Omionga and McNulty coming in. And they've done a fantastic job. I think their strength last season you know, was up top. And the centre forwards just really hit it off this season, but McNulty has changed that. I think the Hearts fans are getting a little bit frustrated, taking risks again. You know, you only have to think back to the Rangers game last weekend where they gifted goals by trying to play out from the back, putting themselves under pressure twice as Lamal has put John Suter under pressure. Jesus again going to battle. Arno Jum, he's one of the ones out of contract. That's a conversation that Craig Levine is keen to have with the Cameroon international. We'll get his future sorted. Stephen Naismith too, and Peter Haring. It's not the cleanest of clearances from Hanlon, it comes to Jume, it's deflected. And out for the corner to Hearts. He tries to side-foot this, bend it into that far corner, Jume, but Hanlon gets it to safety. Well, there's a set play, Hearts' best route to the opening goal it was three weeks ago when Peter Haring headed in to put them one up. An inventive formation and out comes Connor Smith to look for the short one but we'll have to go again. Something untoward. I think off the training ground this one. And Berra. And should there not be a free kick? He's letting him take it again. Well, clear. We'll look for the ball into the middle this time. It was all the way through to Mulraney. Nulty got a touch on the cross. That can make it awkward to defend, and this time... Nick Piezu is the man penalised. Oh, I think we're going to see a lot of this. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Long to McNulty, who won the header, finds Horgan. Then steps Michael Smith. Nick Piezu is the most fouled Hawks player. And he probably gives away the majority as well. June, but it's picked up by Horgan. He loses out to Clare, and now June floats one out for Michael Smith. Nick Piezu, Glenn again, touch tight with Darren McGregor. 
They become 50-50 calls, don't they? And often a referee is just quite happy to leave it. It's so difficult. It's so difficult to call as well, Rory. You know, up against Ekpiazu, but Daryl Hogan got himself down. I don't know if it's Sean Clare. Might have just caught him in the left near the left ankle as he went for that ball. Now that would be a blow with him going off. Such an influential player for Hibbs in an attacking sense. Fingers crossed for Hibbs, he'll be fine. Certainly won't want to lose him two goals the last time. It's one of those where the, the ball's bouncing, it's there to be one, but captures Morgan in the process. That doesn't look good, a shake of the head from the man from Galway. That would be a real blow for Hibernian if he was to go off. I think Paul Heckingbottom looking at his subs, Ryan Gold, Agupon on loan from Manchester City, certainly able replacements if Organ's not fit to continue. Well, Agupon made his comeback last week, got a few minutes at the end. Ryan Gold has played precious little first-team football since his loan signing from Sporting Lisbon. Omionga. Oops, fans looking for a free kick down in that corner. It will be a heart of Midlothian throw. Horgan back on and into his defensive duties. It's Connor Smith robbed by Omionga. So I'm going to catch that though from Stevenson's pass. It's become a little bit sloppy in the last five or ten minutes. Players giving away passes unnecessarily. Lost the rhythm a little bit. Well, that's been given away unnecessarily by John Souter, but Arno Jume has helped out his teammate. It's a couple of just slack errors from the Hearts centre-back. David Gray now gets to the byline and the cross comes in, but that's Zlomal's ball. Not a good cross. Gets to the byline, David Gray. I always like to look at the shape of the team. It looks as if Paul Hickingbottom's now changed that Omionga's going to play wide in the left. It's almost as a front two, a 4-4-2, which he played initially when he first came in as his manager. Here's Clare. And he couldn't drag it away from Mallon, and now Horgan. This will be a test for that ankle. Gets the run from Camberry. And it fizzes across, didn't take a touch on its way through. Well, a big week of European football and Tottenham Hotspur host Ajax of Amsterdam on Tuesday from 7pm. And then on Wednesday, the second Champions League semi-final, Barcelona against Liverpool from the Camp Nou. Clear. Arno Jum offering himself. Canberry gives it straight back to Sean Clare. Ik Piezu now, he's turned his man, he's played in Connor Smith. Flag stays down and pulls it back. Really dangerous ball from the 17 year old, but Hibs are going to scramble their way clear as Stevie Mallon remained calm, took a chance. Well, probably Hart's best opening there. Yeah, hit Hart's picking up everything in the middle of midfield. And now Hibbs have it. And rushing forward is Stefan Omionga. Just had to check. Mallon 
Spotted the space for Stevenson to measure the cross. Berra commanding at the back. Connor Smith does well under pressure. Jum fizz that one at Michael Smith. And Nick Piezu will chase this one. And that was late on Darren McGregor, who's down and hurt. Nick Piezu straight away with an offer of apology. And back to his feet is McGregor, but it will be a yellow card for the heart striker. Oh, look, I don't think he means it. I think it's, a, it's just a silly challenge. McGregor gets there first. Nick Piezu thought he was going to get there. And he got it wrong and he puts himself under pressure. And just a couple of moments ago, seeing him at his best, edge of the box, feeding the ball through. I think Craig Levine will be happy, Stephen, with this start. It will be, because when you make four changes, Chris, you want to see a response. You want to see a reaction from your team. And Craig Levine has got that this afternoon. Certainly pleased young Connor Smith has been terrific for someone so young to come into a derby like this as well. Pleasing. The Hawks haven't won both league games at Easter Road since 96-97. It's a handball from Canberry. Sometimes Derby settled down after 10 or 12 minutes, but this has been frantic from the start, hasn't it? No time to breathe. I expect nothing less from this fixture. Marciano. Milligan to Hanlon. There's Stevenson. Tough one for Camberry, but he's done well against Suter. He's got turned. And now Omionga steps away from Cochrane. Now can he pick out Horgan? It was just too high. He's a slight figure, Daryl Horgan. And they work it really well. Hibbs down the left-hand side. Good centre-forward play. And Canberry, Omionga, he is onside. Horgan just floats over his head. That's a couple of times where Horgan's taken that position in between Mulroney and, and Shaughnessy. There has to be communication between those two. Someone has to pick him up. They've got a couple of warnings. McGregor towering above Connor Smith. Now Camberry. Suter does well this time. Nick Piezu. As Heather finds Michael Smith. Omionga, and he was caught late by Michael Smith. The support not happy, and the result is going to be a second yellow card, this time heading the way of Michael Smith. Well, he just lost his discipline. Really stupid from Smith, who's had a decent start to the game. David Gray. Repelled by Christoph Berra. Omionga, that was clean. And a nice offer from Stevie Mallon out to Lewis Stevenson. Omionga has continued his run, but the pass too heavy. This is a Michael Smith book, and he commits himself. Omionga's too quick, he moves the ball away. Smith's committed to going and putting them under pressure. He acknowledged there was a foul. He acknowledges a yellow card, but again, another player who puts himself on the edge with over an hour to go in this game. Well, Hearts do have a Scottish Cup final to look forward to. But they'll be hoping to sort out their league form before that, four defeats in the last five in the Gladbrokes Premiership. McGregor 
to Hanlon, half an hour played. And he's to road. That will be picked off by Shocknessy. Gray uh, can eventually find its way to Horgan, the danger man. Space for Lewis Stevenson to operate. His option is Omionga. Missed at the front post and Horgan. And it's just over the top from the Irishman. Well, they work it well. Hibbs from right to left. This should be defended better. I think Suter has been very, very sloppy this afternoon. This is his kicking. Ah, Horgan, he's off balance. You think it catches him by surprise? You probably expect Suter to go and clear that ball, Chris, but you're spot on. I think John Suter has been very sloppy this afternoon. A lot of speculation about him moving on. He has to play better than this. And John Suter is one of the Hearts players that they got tied down to a deal to 2022. So should anyone come in, they'll need to pay good money to tempt Parks into a sale. Milligan. Hanlon. With the Australian again. Stevenson. Powering down the left flank. But that stride for stride by Michael Smith. The idea for Hibbs, quick switches the plan, trying to utilise the wide areas. His hearts have the advantage in the middle of the park, the four on three. They've been dominant in there, really, so far. An interesting tactical battle in the fourth Edinburgh derby of the season. McNulty, straight out of play from him. Yeah, you said Craig Levine would be happy, Chris, but I imagine Paul Hickingbottom will be slightly frustrated. They've been a little bit sloppy, haven't they, at times? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a final pass, final ball. Maybe haven't been as dominant in possession as he would have liked. Lee's goal separated the sides when they met here in December, but Omiong has done well to feed Horgan. Now looks for the curling run of Camberry and covering it was Christoph Berry. Had to make up the ground there. He looks second favourite all the way. So Jume's a lucky, lucky boy. There. there was a wild challenge. I wonder whether Craig Thompson will come back to that. Berry got round, used all his experience, doesn't have great pace, but read the situation superbly. McNulty back to captain David Gray. Hanlon to Mallon, Milligan, bit of a breakdown there for Hibernian. Well, they talk about Berry not having lots of pace, but I tell you what, he does unbelievably well to keep up with Cam Berry. That's why he's in the side. Great reading of the game, and this is the tackle you're talking about, Chris, with Jume. It's a huge lunge. Craig Thompson's right on the spot, but he hasn't spoken to him since. Suter's pass goes to Stevenson, but it's straight back at the Hawks centre back. Well, I mean, we've all had them. I don't think I've ever seen John Suter. Play this poorly in a game that's five unforced errors. Camberry, he'll win the battle with Berra. Gets the free kick to Mallon, desperate to get on with it quickly. Not being allowed to by Mulraney or June. 
Craig Thompson just calls for calm. So Hibbs forced into a bit of a change of plot here. Mallon was keen to get on with things quickly. Instead, looks like it'll be a lofted ball into the middle with a Camberry to Hanlon, who's come forward from the back. Good from Berra, really good defending. Didn't dive in, stayed on his feet. From the knockdown. Well, this is a June one from earlier, and this, I think that that's wild. Craig Thompson, looking at that, I think he should have been carded for that. Certainly a yellow. I mean, blimey, what does it take? Tommy Onga really does him a favour there. Just too sharp, isn't he, Omi Onga? He's been lively, crisp in possession, nimble in his feet. He's on loan from Genoa, and Paul Heckingbottom has been talking of how keen he'll be to get him back for next season, but that might come down to what division Genoa will be playing in. They're lurking dangerously above the relegation zone in Serie A. He's getting a run of games in the team now isn't he, Omiongo, which was something didn't really happen under Neil Lennon. It's Camberry. Horgan in space. Now Gray. McNulty. Gray. McNulty again. Well, yeah, Hibbs trying to show that they're one of the best teams to send players to for bigger clubs with players that would be out with their budget normally. That's how they've managed to get McNulty and Omionga. Mibernian coming more and more into it. Hor A good spell for the home side. Well, they haven't plenty of the ball, but haven't really tested the goalkeeper. Hearts are struggling to get up, unless the ball up to Hucci is perfect. They're not really finding... Connor Smith has drifted out of it slightly, Jum's not really been involved. Hearts need to get a hold of the ball. McGregor, and put under pressure. He managed to get out of it with Ikpiezu bearing down on him. And it's there for Clare. Puts it into a good area for Ikpiezu, but it was handball from the striker. I mean, is it deliberate? I'm not so sure it is. I think he's unlucky there. Ikpiezu. How can that be deliberate? It's not, but I think it certainly assists him getting the ball into position where he can play a positive pass. Omionga. Balls managed to stay in play, but Harry Cochran battled really well. Arno Jume has it now, but that's a loose one from him. Just gotten sloppy. Hart and Jume, who had a good start to the game, giving the ball away. It's a good end to the half for Hibbs. Stevenson to Omionga. There's that switch. Fine pass out to Gray. Horgan. There'll be no return to Gray because he was blocked off by Mulraney. And for the opening exchanges, it was Hibbs that couldn't get out, and now it's Hawks that are finding that. Mulraney. And that was out. It will be a corner kick to Hibbs. There's good pressure from David Gray, putting Mulraney under pressure. This is David Gray, you know, just too quick for Mulraney. It's probably a free kick, but he tried to play the advantage and Horgan gave the ball away. But a good opportunity for Hibbs to get this opening goal from the set play. And over comes Stevie Mallon. 
to take the corner kick. Stefan Omiongo was across to get some instructions from the bench. Malin takes it, it's McNulty. It was well worked. Malin again, the flag's up though against the Hibs midfielder. Both teams inventive from set pieces. Well, they're on this fine run, Hibs, but they did go 12 games unbeaten last season, and that was ended at Hearts. Corgan to Omionga. In comes Harry Cochran. And there's a loose one for June to pick up. Finds Connor Smith and a chance for the youngster now to drive. Ik Piezu in support. Timed perfectly, though, by Darren McGregor. Europa League is at semi-final stage as well. Arsenal take on the conquerors of Celtic Valencia and... Chelsea are in Germany to face Eintracht Frankfurt on Thursday from 7.15. Possession maintained at the back. Canberry now. Well, that's shown too much of it to Jake Mulraney. He's away from Gray. Hearts free kick in a promising area. Yeah, positive from Mulraney. I suppose if you're a Hearts player, you're wondering why no card there for David Gray. All three central defenders forward for this one. It's being overseen by Connor Smith and Jake Mulraney. It will be the 17 year old who sends it into the middle. Hanlon rows first. Jim, there's no way pass for him. Now Hibbs look to go from one end to the other. It's a long chase for Horgan. Michael Smith covering the ground. Connor Smith, lovely touch to Jake Mulraney, who continued his run, and he's now going through the heart of the Hibernian side. Jake Mulraney, this would be something very special indeed. Marciano palms it away into the path, though, of Harry Cochran. It's Mulraney now. Ikpiezu, and the ball breaks away of McGregor, and Hibbs can breathe a sigh of relief. Terrific run from Mulraney. What a lovely touch, though, deft. From Connor Smith into his path, and he just keeps going and going. I just wonder there whether he thought about passing it to Michael Smith. But he takes the shot on, and that's a smart save. Suter pulled back by Camberry, and it's a yellow card this time for him. Hearts quickly on with things in the final minute of normal time in this first half. Shocknessy. Hanlon can clear. Tough job on for McNulty, but he uses strength up against Berra. Is Lamal well out of his goal? Not the cleanest of clearances. Omionga gets there ahead of clear, who has been dragged back as well. And, well, the question from Stevie Mallon is, why is that not a yellow card? And the answer is, from Craig Thompson, that it will be. I think Aston McPhee having a word with the fourth official and saying, well, what about the one earlier on Gray? I think it is a card, though. Craig Thompson gets that one right, but consistency across the board. There's going to be one minute added on Hibbs in the ascendancy and it's Stevenson what a strike from him McNulty now fires it across and Berra 
is so well placed to clear the danger. Hibbs finishing the half on a high, but how high? It's there and it's over the top from McGregor, but the whistle had already gone. Oh, I tell you what. I'm not sure about the goalkeeping here. He's a long way out, Stevenson. But he hits a rocket there. It may be moving a bit. Just catch it, Bobby's Lamal. And as the ball drops, it's Berra, all his experience. McNulty does well. Hook it into a danger area. And Berra back there, clears it off the line. Yeah, and even here, you know, I think it is a soft free kick on Lamal. But what about Dan McGregor? He's put it 20 yards over the bar, but what a passage of play. Hibbs, Hibbs unfortunate to get the breakthrough. Now a dramatic end to the first half at Easter Road. As it stands, though, no goals scored in the fourth Edinburgh derby of the season at the break. Hibernian nil, Heart of Midlothian nil. Welcome back, it's nil-nil at the break here at Easter Road, we'll see the action in a moment. Also let me tell you, lots of games still to come from us in Scotland before the season's out. Aberdeen Hearts, Friday the 10th of May, 7.15 BT Sport 1. St Mirren Hamilton, Monday of that weekend, the 13th of May, and then the final weekend of the season. On the Saturday, Dundee St Mirren, midday BT Sport 1, Kilmarnock Rangers, Sunday the 19th, 2.30 on 2. We've also got the playoffs to come as well. Gary Locke and Alan Stubbs are here, lots to talk about in that half but no goals. We said Daryl Horgan would be a key player. A couple of times he's been in dangerous positions. Yeah, he's, he's always, he looks like he's always been Hibbs' outlet. You know, he's been the one that they've been trying to, to, to find. You know, he gets himself in a great position here in between the wing-back and, and the left-side centre-back, you know, and the ball's just a little bit too high for him in the end. Who should take responsibility there, Alan? Well, look, Mulraney has either got to be talking to Sean O'Sea, and if he's doing that, Otherwise, he's got to stay with them. You know, he can't. He can't just do neither because that's basically what he's done. If, if that's the case, he's in again here. Yeah, we've been a little bit fortunate on a couple of occasions, and it's stuff he's touched on there. You know, Jake's got to talk to Connor there. If, if he's not going to go with the run, he's got to pass him on to Connor. And, and when you look at it, you know, if Jake, Jake gives Connor a wee shout, I mean, I know it's difficult because of the atmosphere and that of the game. But if he gives him a good early shout, then Connor can take care of that. Jake Mulraney seems like such an important player today, both sides of the game, not just defensively, but going forward as well. Yeah, he's, he's got space. He's been outstanding the last, you know, three, four games for us. And, you know, one thing about Jake, he's got blistering pace, you know, when he gets at people like this, he's a massive asset for us. And, uh, you know, it's a great run and he's very, very unlucky. Is he right to strike at goal there? Yeah, he's, you know, I think from a heart's point of view, this is what they want to see him do more of, because there's been a couple of occasions where he's got the ball, but he's not been as positive with it. You know, on that occasion, he was positive, and it's resulted in him getting an effort on goal. Lewis Stevenson saw that. He fancied a bit down the other end. He yeah, struck one from distance. Should Slamal do better? Yeah, I think Bobby should do better. You know, at that occasion, he should maybe hold that. And then, you know, when it comes back into the box, yeah, it is a foul on him, you know, by Canlins obviously pushed him and, and Craig Thompson's made the right decision there but you know one place that he doesn't want to save that is putting it back into the danger area you know if anything you're looking for him just to tip that round the post yeah I, I think he should do better you know if anything he's got to push that away he can't push it back into bodies on Russian bodies coming into him you know the ball you've got to give him a bit of Oh, the benefit that's out the ball is moving but I don't think it's as moving as much yeah. where he you know he just palms it back in there you know this you're always going to get a foul now for this off the referees. You know, I don't think there's an awful lot of contact, but there's enough for the referee to make an easy decision. Who had the better of that half, do you think? I thought we started really well. You know, I thought uh, the first part of the game, I thought we dictated it, and then you know, Paul Heckenbottom made a little tactical change. Uh, and that got two up back top. Give, yep, two up front against our three at the back. And that got Hibs back into the game. So, you know, over the piece, I think a draw at half time probably fair as well. Okay, guys, thank you very much for now. No goals for you in the first 45, but plenty of endeavour on a lovely day in the capital. Second 45 next.
what a view. Arthur Seat's busy up there today. He's been edge of your seat stuff here because it's 0-0 at the break in the balance and that's the Australia under-14s futsal team. Boys and girls, they did score a few goals in the interval there and they also gave out some gifts to our team. Lovely, eh? Lovely. Just hearing a change coming for Hibs. Slivka is going to be coming on. I believe it's Camberry who's coming off. Any surprise there? Um, well, uh, I'm guessing it may be only because of injury, you know, or obviously if it's not, it must be a tactical reason. Uh, maybe, you know, Paul wants to try and get a more of a foothold in the game, you know. To win the midfield battle. Uh, considering what they've got, because I think that is an area where they probably, you know, they, in, early on they struggled. You know, yeah. Hearts definitely had a foothold in the game with that extra man in there. You know, so maybe that's the case. If it's not injury related, is that a slight surprise to you? Yeah, it's a surprise. I think I think that is an injury. You know, Camberry, Camberry was actually playing pretty well in the game. So pretty much, I imagine, he must have picked up an injury in the first half. He was almost in, of course, before Berra blocked in that first 45. How do you see this second half, Alan? Well, hopefully we can get some goals, you know, because it's the, the game started off well for, for Hart, but they didn't really capitalise on Goldmouth area. Hibs finished the, the, the first half well, you know, but it's had, it's had a bit of everything rather than the goals at the moment. Absolutely has. OK, here we go again, back over to Stephen Craig and Chris Sutton and Rory Hamilton. Thank you very much, Darrell. Another close contest between these two. As to be expected, there hasn't been more than a goal between them all season. A win a piece and a draw and 45 minutes to try and separate each other in the final Edinburgh derby of the season a tactical switch that has brought Vikinta Slivka on for Florian Camberry for this second half the Lithuanian will slot into the midfield how much will that alter the way that Hibs play well, I think they want to match up now, don't they, in the, in the middle of the park, and that's the reason Slivka has come on. Hearts oh, dominant in the early stages. Mistake from Jake Mulraney. Yeah, I just think having an extra midfield player in there, as opposed to two centre-forwards, we're getting a little bit exposed. So, again, it's clever management from Paul Heckingbottom. He witnessed the problem, and he's tried to fix it. Jesu unable to gather that one. And then off here, Marciano sends it long. Connor Shocknessy bundled over by Slivka. I have to say, I don't think a draw really suits either Hibs. They have an outside chance of European football that they really need to win today. And Hearts, it's a big end to the season with them. Got final places up for grabs. Both have Kilmarnock and Aberdeen still to come with Hibs away at Rangers next and Hearts finishing up at Celtic and Uche Ikpiezu is just hobbling at the start of this second half and holding that right knee. And he's so important to the way that Hearts play. Horgan. Hibbs had a scare with him in the first half. He's got David Gray looping round the outside, turned away, but only as far as Stevenson. It's really well blocked by John Souter. Well, he didn't have the best first half, John Souter. I just wonder how crucial this block was. Stevenson catches it flush. Souter gets in the way, maybe fortunate that it goes wide. Well, it looked like it was about to nestle in that bottom corner. And John Souter's intervention saves the day for Hearts. But the danger not over. Stevie Mallon lofts that one in. That's Christoph Berra's ball all day long. It's returned by Milligan trying to catch out Zlamal. UEFA Champions League semi-finals coming this week. Tottenham Hotspur against Ajax on Tuesday and followed by Barcelona 
against Liverpool on Wednesday from 7 p.m. Arnold Jew stole in ahead of Malin. Now Connor Smith in a very promising first 45 minutes. Suter. Now Sean Clare. Mulraney. Clare will catch that. Milligan going all the way with him. Mulraney looked for the inside run. It was well read though. Silly challenge from Clare. You mentioned Connor Smith. Looks a bright young prospect. Looks about 12 years old, mind, doesn't he? Scotland under 17's captain. And a fine showing on his maiden start. And what a game to be thrown into. It's interesting with young players, you learn a lot about them, Rory, when you put them in. You know, their mentality, emotionally, can they cope with the game as well? And it hasn't phased them. Sometimes they can have that fearlessness. Nick Piezu had a hold of Darren McGregor. He doesn't believe he should have been penalised for that. No. And do you know what? On the eye, I think he's really unlucky there. Oh, I don't think there's much in that. McGregor, big strong boy himself, but I think he gets lucky there. Stevenson to Milligan. Now Omionga. And pulled back by Arno Jum. It's just too sharp again, isn't he? Omionga. You know, he moves very well. It's a free kick from Jim. I mean, you could argue it's a yellow card as well. There's two players booked in the first half for pulling people back. Three in total for Hearts, one for Hibbs, but Camberry has gone off. He was the only one for Paul Heckingbottom's side as it's sent in by Malin straight to Bobby's Lamal. And he's quick to get on with things to release Sean Clare. And he's got the pace to get away from Darren McGregor. And it's just the throw, no free kick that the Hearts players were wanting. Clare puts the burners on. I think it should have been a free kick. They couldn't have got that more wrong. And Clare this time gives away the free kick. He was one of the ones yellow carded in the first half, along with Michael Smith and Uche Ikpiezu. It's been scrappy start to the second half, hasn't it? You know, there's been no rhythm. No one's really gotten control of the game. Fouls, misplaced passes. It's got to be better. Both sides really want to get a hold of this game and get a big three points. They're going to have to improve. And the out ball for Hibs are the full-backs again. And they're matching up in midfield. They've got to move the ball really quickly from side to side. It's Harry Cochran. To Arno Jum. Now Connor Smith. And Nick Piezu won't be able to catch that ahead of Paul Hanlon. He takes up good positions, Connor Smith, doesn't he? You know, it's, it's clever. Just in behind that Hibbs midfield. Final pass, though. Michael Smith. Jum. Stevenson. Free kick for the home side. Two fouls from Jim in the space of a couple of minutes. He has been booked, so I think Craig Thompson is just having a word. Stevenson forward. Michael Smith gets the return from Arno Jim. It's a good run from Mick Piezu. 
face stop by McGregor. Excellent well done, defending. Yeah. Good positive play from Piazu. I think Hibsch should have had a foul there. McGregor stood firm. Well won by Stevenson against Smith. Mallon spots Horgan in space and Cochrane is coming across to try and cover that, which he does. Doesn't always extinguish the danger when Daryl Horgan is breaking forward, though. Stevie Mallon now with space to measure and Berra got there ahead of his goalkeeper. It's not quite safe yet for Hart. Slivka back to Mallon. He loves a shot from distance. Such good delivery, Mallon. Doesn't think about anything else when he gets the ball wide. The ball comes back out. Doesn't get enough power on the shot. Nick Piazza, it's really well won for Michael Smith. Now Connor Smith is just going to escape and go forward for Marciano. Stevenson couldn't quite stick for Milligan or for McNulty rather and here's the striker lays it back to Stevenson neatly into Omionga but Christoph Berra reading the play so too Mark Milligan and that's a wild lunge from Arno June it will be a yellow card this time Well, you have to say, if you're watching all this game, you think that he actually wanted to get booked. I mean, that's probably his fourth really daft challenge. I mean, I think that's certainly a card, and that Craig Thompson refereed the game properly. it would have been off the pitch by now. Here's Horgan. Great. Milligan under pressure, but he's still able to find Stevenson. Omionga pulling wide to this left hand side. Stevie Mallon. Stevenson. Very clever indeed. It's a fine ball into sleep because ever. The header brilliantly saved by Zlomal. Horgan now, turned back into the middle, McNulty's after it, but again Zlamal comes up Trump's big moment in the derby. Bobby at his best. Connor Smith just switches off defensively. I think he's allowed to get in there too easily, Stevenson, he's right on the money with the ball. And one brilliant save, and then brave again. Zlamal, strong in the challenge. I think Slivka, though, should score. It just makes me think that Slivka, when he gets in between the defenders, if he puts the ball down, if he heads it into the ground, it's a goal. As good as save it is, it's a perfect height for Zlamal. He's trying to make himself big. Off his just, shoulder, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, just slightly off his shoulder. Takes the pace out of the ball, but if he can direct that down into the ground, Hibbs would be ahead. survives the collision and that's what you want your goalkeeper to be brave and he certainly was there Vikinta Slivka has got a knack for goals in the big games scored against both Celtic and Rangers last season it's the best chance of the game and it's all about the connection. You just have to concentrate and get it right. Off his shoulder, big miss. The 
was Cochran, but had to win it back from Slivka. Gray, McNulty just trying to help that on into the path of Omionga. Berra again having to go at full stretch, concedes the corner. It's good link-up play, isn't it? McNulty, clever, just getting in front of John Suter. Omionga's presence is energy, forcing Berra to put it out for a corner kick. Mallon and a few late arrivals coming into the box. It's towards Hanlon, and again, Berra. First to the aerial ball, McGregor leaves it to sleeve cut. Nick Piezu gets a second chance to clear, and down goes Hanlon. Penalty kick for Aberdeen. Won by Paul Hanlon under the challenge of Uche Ikpiezu. And what a chance for Hibernian. He knows. Ikpiezu knows. It's a poor touch initially. He can't get it clear. And credit Hanlon for not giving it up. He wins the ball first, and then there's the contact. An easy decision for Craig Thompson. He didn't protest it. What a chance. Hibernian looking for back-to-back -back derby wins. Is it on the spot? It's Mark McNulty, the man who Hearts were interested in in January. McNulty misses! The digital mile get a touch, it ricocheted off the post. It stays nil-nil, McNulty denied. Well, I wondered whether the ball was on the spot. Actually... Goes across Lamar, who guesses right, hits the outside of the post. Oh, it's a huge miss for Hibbs from a player. Who has done brilliantly in a Hibbs shirt up until now. He's had a barren spell as well, McNulty, desperate for a goal. I think he scored in his last six for Hibbs, and that was a striker. Just desperate to score. Hit the ball as hard as you can, but let off for Hutch. Nick Piezu. And he asked for more from the heart support. They got a reprieve, and he got a reprieve there. Stephen McLean will be coming on for Hart and Midlothian for the final half hour. Sean Clare. And away comes Mallon. Play on. The advantage applied. Horgan. Mulraney will have the pace to get back. Milligan, sleeve cut. Now Hanlon to Stevenson. Well, it's bubbling very nicely. Hearts are starting to camp in a little bit. Hibbs dominating the ball, moving it side to side. Missed their big opportunity. I'm not surprised Craig Levine's going to try and change something. He needs fresh impetus in his team. We're just going to wait a little longer before potentially bringing on Stephen McLean. Bear up in in front of Sleepka. Well, the issue is with Stephen McLean is, you know, who do you take off? Well, we did see it, Piezu holding his knee, he seems to recover from that, but he is on a card, he did give away the penalty kick, but by taking him off, you lose so much of what he offers. But Hibs are really knocking at the door, you know, on the front foot, they're forcing the issue. You just get a sense of the pressure they're having if there's a goal coming. It's coming, green and white. Hibbs, the dominant side, but yet to find the net. Gray attacks that, so too bear up. And again, Hart's captain leading by example.
He rises again with McGregor this time. Well, in fairness, Berrett's headed everything. And he'll feel his side should be in front, Paul Heckenbottom. Omionga turns away from Jume, just overcooked the pass a little to sleeve cut. Just on Christoph Berra, you know, it's the, the perfect captain's performance away from home in a derby. You've got to defend your box, you've got to clear your lines, you've got to get people in beside you, and be a leader. He certainly has been that this afternoon. 22nd derby for the Hearts captain. McNulty. Stan Hawks maybe changing their potential sub and Ryan Edwards could be the one to come on. In the meantime, defensive work for the Jambos. Ryan Edwards, signed from Partick Thistle last summer, and it is Connor Smith, the 17-year-old, who goes off. And here is Edwards, a precious few opportunities in the Hearts jersey. I think the Hearts fans thought he disappeared. He did spend the first half of the season in St Mirren, but limited game time. An impact player, he's got energy, he's got pace. That's the reason why Craig Levine will have brought Ryan Edwards on. I think we have to say well done to Connor Smith as well. Showed some really nice touches. Didn't hide on the big stage. Marciano to Hanlon, Edwards pressing high up. Milligan calm in possession. Great, trying to release Mallon. Yeah, both teams struggling for that final thing to do with the ball. Most important thing in football, that final pass, that final cross or touch. Hasn't been quite good enough in the second half. The Hibs have scored ten more in the league than Hearts, conceded ten fewer. No goals so far, though. Yeah, they look the more likely team, though, don't they? It's a mistake there from Cochrane. Horgan then. Uses his skill to get away from him. Now being closed down, McNulty. It's a strong challenge yeah. from Suter and a good one. Yeah, and he had to get it right. He did get it right. Got the desired deflection on the ball just there. Had a dodgy first half, but I tell you, that was a crucial interception. Marciano got a little lucky with that one to find Lewis Stevenson. Omionga now to Vikinta sleeve cut. It's just too far ahead of David Gray. And I think it's just instinctive from John Suter. He sees the ball can past him, sticks his leg out. That touches enough, or it could have been another penalty. Jum. Break of the ball comes off Malin to. Milligan and Omionga now feeds sleeve cut. He couldn't return. Tell you another worry for Hearts, Harry Cochran. He looks really leggy at the moment. Wonder whether Craig Levine will think about the change in there. It's only his sixth game of the season for the first team. Played so much of last term. Now it's great. 
And Horgan slides it across. It's an own goal. And Hibernian do get the breakthrough. Christoph Berra, who has been immense at the heart of the Hearts defence, but it's turned into their own net. And it's Hibs who celebrate. They look to be top dogs in this town once again. Well, you can't say it wasn't coming. Hibs dominant in the second half. Good little overlap there from Horgan and Berra. Has headed everything. It's been brilliant. Four hearts. Just can't get his feet moving. Tired legs from Berra. Into the back of the net. And that's a big goal for Hibs. You still have hopes of Europe. It's been coming. Hibs have been the dominant team in the last 10 minutes. They've been driving forward. They've had too much pace, too much power. Hearts are running on empty. And what a time to get the goal. 20 minutes to go. Edinburgh is green and white. Well, Stephen McLean is on for Sean Clare. That was planned before the goal. But they've only got 20 minutes to respond to that goal, an own goal from Christoph Berra. And it had been coming this second half. Hibernian have been the dominant side, and they're the ones celebrating in the sunshine. Hearts have been penned in second half. They haven't managed to really get themselves up the pitch. It's been about Hibs winning the ball and driving at them, committing people. But Chris is spot on. Harry Cochran, even for the goal, treading water, trying to get back in midfield. It's been a tough afternoon in the middle of the pitch. The Hibs are getting stronger. That's what the Hearts fans feared. Didn't manage to sell out the away end allocation for this game. One of the first times in recent history that that's been the case. Well, they haven't really created enough and done enough going forward. Marciano had the save from the Mulraney effort in the first half, but nothing clear-cut from Hearts. They'll need a change of mentality here if they're to get back into it. Can Stephen McLean provide that? Ryan Edwards on two, we got the shot of Oli Bazanek, who will be the third change to come shortly. In the meantime, though, the threat of Daryl Horgan looms large again, but straight to Arno Jume. Milligan going up against his fellow countryman and Ryan Edwards. Now it Piezu is unable to control it though. And McGregor happy to slide in and feed the ball to David Gray. Omionga now. And He's gone Melty offside, isn't he? He's offside. Here comes the final change for Craig Levine. And it is the Australian, Oliver Brzanic, to come on for the final 18 minutes. And Harry thought, Cochran will go off. I thought he did all right, Harry Cochran, especially in the first half. Gave them legs in the middle of the park, but then he tired. And I suppose Craig Levine, on reflection, maybe thinking, I should have hooked him earlier. Suter to Ikpiezu, almost, as he and Stephen McLean reform that strike partnership. Europa League semi-finals this week, Arsenal against Valencia on Thursday from 7.15. And at the same time, Chelsea head to Eintracht Frankfurt, that's on 3HD. Zanek and Christoph Berra is down. Yeah, he wasn't happy with the challenge from McNulty. He leads with his elbow there. McNulty, credit Berra for getting back on his feet. I don't think he threw the arm, though. I think McNulty 
as he's entitled to, to do, is trying to protect himself. I agree, he's not used it as a weapon, but if he lead with it, then you're certainly thinking, I don't want to take one in the head, but someone else may get one. So I think it's a little bit cheeky for Mark McNulty, if I'm honest. Cheeky is an interesting word. He knows what he's doing. Berra again, and he just got the nudge that time from McNulty. Well, sometimes this game can be cruel, and Christoph Berra is experiencing that right now with the own goal after having played so, so well for Hearts. He'll be determined to lead his side back onto level terms. And here's Mulraney. That's ridiculous from Mulraney. No time to be a show pony here. Borderline whether he's offside, but take the ball in, show a bit of bravery. Jump to Bozanic. They've replaced the youth with experience in the heart side. And plenty of it as Stephen McLean pins it to Shocknessy. Now Mulraney. Bozanic looks for Edwards, but Hanlon tracking it. You'd have to say this would be a huge disappointment for Hearts if Hibbs go six points ahead of them with three games to go, considering where they were. Hammer blow. But they haven't been good enough today. Hibbs have been better. Second half in particular, Hearts have fell away. Hibbs have got stronger. They deserve to be ahead. And they'll need to raise their game. They don't do not want their league season to peter out and then have to just raise it for a Scottish Cup final against a rampant Celtic side. Stephen McLean back to Bazanic. Berra's up there. So too, though, is Hanlon. And Nick Piezu will beat Omionga to the ball. Mulraney, Berra's at the back post. And it's straight into the arms of Marciano. Well, he's going to be disappointed with that, Christoph Berra. It's a good spot from Mulraney. Gets that too close to Marciano. You know, but we talk about momentum and, you know, we speak about Paul Heckingbottom. As it stands, it just keeps on coming and coming, results, performances. The feel-good factor is back at Easter Road. Bazanic. Suter. Smith now. Hanlon just stepped in front of Vic Piezu. McGregor too in control. Well, other than that, he's been that clearance. He's been fantastic, as is Hanlon, and they have dealt well with Ik Piazu. The Hearts will feel uh, one nil. Just need to create something. Get the chance, take it. Omionga. Piezu wins it back and wins the free kick. A lot of opposing teams think if you can stop Piezu, stop the service into him, deal with him, you can take away a lot of the Hearts threat on your goal. Well, this is a threat. And Bazanic will take the free kick. Goalkeeper came out, started to it with shock in the seat. Twice, McGregor, crucial headers. Omionga and Bazanic across, he will be next into Craig Thompson's book. And it's good play by Omionga. 
He's coming under pressure from the set play. Yet again, just too quick for Bozanic. He's committed himself, he's went to ground. Omeonga, excellent play. Stevenson, bear up. Bob McNulty. They've rarely looked under major pressure. The Hibs defence throughout this game. Great. Shocknessy. Mulraney. Came off Edwards last. Real victory there for David Gray. He's been brilliant, hasn't he, in the Hibs shirt. And Alan stops signing, likes to remind us. He was at Hawks as a kid before he headed down to Old Trafford. Craig Levine did want a response from last week's performance against Rangers. I think he's got it with energy, appetite for the game, but he lacked a little bit of quality today. You touched on it, Rory. The Hibs back line hasn't really been put under a lot of pressure. And that will be a concern for Craig Levine. Free kick against Mulraney. You think chances from open play from Hart's point of view is it's it's not enough. You don't feel like they're gonna create anything. In fairness, Connor Smith, a couple of nice touches. Haven't really penetrated enough. And the goals have dried up a bit for them. The points too, really. They went top of the league on November the 10th, and since then they've just averaged a point a game fallen all the way down to sick and at the moment that looks like their likely finishing position but I like it Piezu I think he holds the ball in well but I tell you I think he's got to shift a bit of weight but also two goals from your uh, sorry two league goals from your main striker Chris isn't going to be anywhere near enough is it but I think he holds the ball in gets his team up the pitch and of course he had that Spell out with it with an injury long term. There's a player in there, but get yourself fit. Horgan gets his pocket picked by Mulraney. Here is Ik Piezu. Bit of footwork. It's the free kick out of David Gray. Well, these situations look like. Hart's best chance to find an equaliser. And Hibs have stood up to the set piece balls pretty well. Bazanic to take. Beres after that one. Hanlon with the flicked header clear. Up for the short one to Shocknessy. That's not going to do the trick. Yeah, exactly. It's normally see that down the park on a Sunday morning. Not a big derby game. Take a short throw in the centre half and ask him to cross the ball. Wow. Oh, we could do it with Van Dyke. There's a bit of a difference. But that probably sums up Hearts this afternoon. Haven't had enough quality in the final third of the pitch, but it's really mattered to put Hibs in the back foot. They haven't found what they've been looking for. Up goes McGregor. Nick Piezu not giving up the fight. And he's found McLean. 
promising here for Hearts. It plays There's the equaliser. It's come from nothing. But Uche Ikpiezu has rescued Hart and Midlothian in the derby. They look dead and buried, but they have come back to life. Big goal, big player. Tell you, there is a player in there somewhere. It is a handful. And yes, Stephen's right, he hasn't scored enough goals in a hard show, but this... All comes from in desire, wins the challenge, it's a clever pick out from McLean and it's a composed finish from McPiezu. There, he just fights, scraps, doesn't give up, pops it out wide, and then drifts in. It is a really good spot from Stephen McLean, but I tell you, it's a nice finish. And Hearts back in it. That's Dekamono was on the pitch celebrating, and that's why he's been given a yellow card. But wow, out of nothing, let's be honest, Hearts have been struggling today. And I think even Steve McLean's pass, Chris, he may have mishit it. But Nick Piazzi doesn't care. He's got the goal, he says he's the man. Well, the yellow card for Clevy Dekamona, and some of the over exuberant celebrations have led to a flare in the far corner, but it hasn't encroached upon the pitch. I love the celebration. Shows what it means for these players. Well, you couldn't see a way back into this for Hearts, despite the fact that they were only a goal down. The combination of Ikpiezu and McLean have got them right back in it. Well, I'm giving McLean credit, and I think Stephen. He may be right, thinks that McLean mishit that. And now Craig Levine's men have got the thirst for a winner. Bozanic, up goes Berra. And it's Hibbs that are now looking a little nervy at the back. It's the beauty of a derby, isn't it? You haven't really been in the game, you haven't threatened, but you just know that you may get one opportunity and you've got to take it. And the Hearts fans behind the goal went mental. Now the long throw. Beat the first man. A few rows in there from their seats in the away end. Edwards wins it back for Bozanic. Mulraney, Hearts with their tails up. Arno Jume. It's a fixture steeped in late to drama. And McLean is in there again. Hanlon clear. Ikpiezu! <laughs> something else wow what about this from Biguchi has held back in hearts with all the momentum this is brilliant it's a smart save part of Melodian believe again and down goes Ik Piezu this time I'll tell you what, that's a good chance. What a terrific ball along the line of the six-yard box. And I think it's Mark Milligan. He's not even looking the right way, but Uchi so close twice in the last couple of minutes. Here's the finish from Piazu. Really composed, passed it into the net. This is what it means. Piezu loving it. Now it's Bazanic. Right now, if there's to be a winner, it only looks like it's coming from one team. Or perhaps not. Here goes Horgan. Mulraney did really well using his pace. 
Hearts are energised. You know, they've got a huge lift from the goal. Steve McLean, I think, coming on as well. It's given him a great foothold. He takes the ball in well. Allows Hearts up the pitch. Uche Ikpiezu scoring with Hearts. First shot on goal in the second half. This one is far from finished just yet. It's Horgan turfs that one into the middle. Thomas Agupong will be coming on for the final moments of this game. Daryl Horgan makes his way off for the man on loan from Manchester City. What a frustrating time with injury for Agupong. Ikpiezu proving to be a real handful. Oh, is that short from McGregor? And in came Edwards. Marciano just got there first, and he absolutely had to. Hand of apology from McGregor. be almost as you were certainly with the gap between the two will be down to four points the gap to Kilmarnock in fourth but Hibs were hoping to cut that by more there'll be three more minutes in the derby June Omionga goes back it's going to be a hard corner I'll tell you the hearts look dead and buried didn't they halfway into this Second half, they've shown great desire and resolve. Hearts have their hearts back. Hearts digging deep in the closing stages. Mulraney on McNulty, break of the ball for Milligan. And now Mallon and Bear up who has been a colossus for Hearts. He's all or nothing, isn't he? You know, even that tackle, fully committed, fighting for the cause. The own goal, probably a little bit unjust for him, because he has been tower of strength in that defence for Hearts this afternoon. And again. And he's going forward. Hearts can go level on points with Hibbs with a winner. They'll still be behind on goal difference. Vazanic picks out Michael Smith. Comes under pressure from sleeve cut. Suter. Trying to fashion something down at the corner flag. Now Omionga. A minute left to play. Him streaming forward. Sleeve cut. Is there to be late drama? Well, someone will have to explain that heart's free kick to us. I mean, the centre-halves go forward. They take it short and make a real mess of it. And it, Ikpiezu was taken down off the ball by Lewis Stevenson, who then continued into Stephen McLean. It all just breaks out a little bit from the benches. Craig Thompson is the calmest man in the stadium. I think Stevenson... This is poor from him, really. Hearts oh, wanting the quick throw in. Ikpiezu... Made a run, and Stevenson took him out. Just there, he's a lucky boy to get a yellow. I mean, he's kicked out. That should be red.
Well, Stevenson and McLean both booked, and that is that. Well, a derby to embrace and celebrate. It was a really entertaining contest. And it ends all square. Christoph Berra with an own goal after a really top performance, despite that moment. And then Hearts looked out of it, but for a late goal from Uche Ikpiezu that gets Hearts a point and keeps them intact with their city rivals in the Ladbrokes Premiership table. Very entertaining game at Easter Road. In the sunshine in Leith, it ends. Hibernian 1, Heart of Midlothian 1. Thank you very much to Rory and the guys. Hibs were closing in on a second straight derby victory before Nick Piezu had his say. The Jambos are the team celebrating. We've got lots to come as well. We're with Hearts again up at Pitodry. That's Friday, 10th of May, 7.15, BT Sport 1. St Mirren v Hamilton is the 13th, 7.15, same channel. Dundee, St Mirren, the last Saturday of the season, the 18th of May from midday. And Kilmarnock v Rangers to round things off on the 19th at 2.30. That's BT Sport 2, the playoffs as well well on this network and the table then still three points between the Edinburgh sides Hibs have closed in on Kilmarnock four points but they were hoping that that would be down to two tonight so in the end it was one goal apiece but those in Maroon will be toasting that man Uchi Ikpiezu tonight it's his first goal in the derby and it was a big one A second chance to clear and down goes Adlon. Penalty kick for Hibernian. It's Mark McNulty. McNulty misses. Now it's great. And Horgan slides it across. It's an own goal. And Hibernian do get the breakthrough. Promising here for Hearts. It's There's the equaliser. It is a draw, but hearts of the team celebrating at Easter Road after that late drama reaction with Emma Dodds. Darren, point shared here today. How do you reflect on that result? I think bitterly disappointed, to be honest. I think for the lion's share of the game, I thought we'd done, we'd done what was needed. We passed the ball well. We created numerous opportunities, and they've had one shot, and they've the scored. So very disappointed, but it's a point gain, so... I suppose in one light we, we move forward and we try and continue the progress up the league. Mark, there was chances in that match, namely the, the penalty. How are you feeling about that now? Yeah, obviously gutted. Like uh, Darren touched on there, I thought 80 minutes of the game we were the better team. Uh, they've had one chance and fair play they've took it. Uh, but yeah, disappointed about the penalty if, if that goes in. I think it's a different game. Is it a sign of how far this team have come, the turnaround that you've made on Hearts and obviously the, the domination that you had in that match? I think since the gaffers came in, we've been obviously outstanding and that's that showed with the results that we've been getting uh, and it's testament to the boys' character and also the, the philosophy that the gaffers try to instil in the team as well. The unbeaten run does continue, obviously you didn't get the win today, but four points behind Kilmarnock, you still to play them. Is the aim still, or do you believe that you can surpass them into that fourth place? Yeah, of course, we've got to believe... Um, We've been on a great run, uh, boys are confident, like Dan said, it's another point gained today, so we just look to the next game and hopefully take three points and get a little bit closer. <laughs> and Darren, you've just committed your future to the club, is that a weight off your mind getting that contract signed? Yeah, it was, but I mean, for me the most important thing was uh, finishing strong. I think the, f the first part of the season we all let ourselves down collectively, but as I say, since the managers came on, we've managed to achieve top six and we just want to push up the league and, and uh, finish as high as we possibly can. Well, you are the man of the match this afternoon. Congratulations to the champagne. Thank you. Well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Stubbs and Gary Locke are here to look back on the match. Darren McGregor said there it was a point gained, but does it feel like it's too dropped at the moment when you think about all the chances, including the penalty missed yeah, in the second when, half? I think when you concede so late on, it can feel like it has that feeling of, you know, that you've that you've you've dropped two points, you know, and, and it, it's, Hibs players will certainly feel that way. Um, you know, I, I thought overall, I thought Hart started the game really well. I thought Hibs, Hibs combated that by uh, the changing system. 
And I thought as the game went on, Hibs become the, the stronger team. You know, but at 1 0, you'd always run the risk of the other opposition equalising. Gary, did you think that was a penalty, right, Colt? I think Paul Hanlon there is very clever there, you know, he knows that Uchi's let it bounce, he just gets in front of him. And you can understand why Craig Thompson's gave the penalty kick, but fortunately for us, you know, McNulty's put it past the post. Yeah, that was missed, but you felt it that time, didn't you, Alan? Like a goal was coming. Yeah, Hibs were definitely in, you know, on top of that at time. They were very strong, you know. They they looked like they were they were going to be the team that were going to score, you know, that goal that was going to break through. Uh, they certainly did, but you know, Hearts finished the, the game really strongly. They did. The breakthrough there was an own goal, Berra, who'd had a really good game up to that point. Yeah, I thought Christoph was outstanding today for start to finish. Yeah, and it's you know it's unfortunate, you know, he's got to go and try and deal with that. Obviously it goes through his legs and, and, and fortunately for us it goes into the net. But at that stage of the game, you know, Hibs Hibs were on top and uh, you know they deservedly went one 0 up there. Yeah, they had a number of opportunities in the second half, Al. Yeah, they did. You know, it was but in these in these derbies, the the, the one on fine margins, you know, and more often than not, you do need that second goal as just a little bit of a breather, you know, to give you a bit of breathing space in the game. And and it didn't come. And you know, Hearts, you'll always get a chance or one or two chances in a game, and they took it in the end. Honestly, did you sense the equaliser coming? No, I thought I thought the introduction of Stephen McLean made a massive difference for us. The second know. week in a row. Yeah, once once he came on, you know, he showed his experience. You know, he's a very very clever footballer, Stephen. And uh, you know, you see, when he came on today, that's the reason Craig brought him to the club. Uh, you know, shows all the experience there, and you know, the one chance we got by Gucci tucks it away brilliantly. Maybe slightly lucky with the assist. See, the the thing with Ikpeju is that he he gathers other people around him. You know, he's in a, a tussle there with Darren McGregor. But then he, he brings Paul McGregor into it and they try and out muscle him, which is going to be very difficult to do. They get the little bit of rub of the green by the ball breaking into his path and he finishes it really well. You know, there's no denying that. And that away end absolutely loved yeah. that, didn't they? No, it's, it, there's nothing better than, you know, as a Hearts player, you know, scoring down here and as a fan as well. Uh, and the fact that we stayed in the game, you know, we, we, we did they play brilliantly second half, but we dug in and the subs that came on made a little difference for us, got us back in the game. And as I say, Stephen McLean's experience for me, you know, got us back in the game today. Right, here's the Hearts boss now. Craig Levine is with Emma. Craig, 1-1 here. Was that a fair result? Um, yeah, we were under the cosh for a little spell, but that was really, really pleased the way we, we fought back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and managed to haul herself back into the match. So last week I was disappointed in our reaction to going behind, and uh, you know, and the lads have, have stepped up to mark today. And uh, I thought for a, for a derby it was quite an open match. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, seems to be pretty end to end. Mm -hmm. I've not seen many of them uh, uh, those in my time. So uh, I'm sure it was uh, good entertainment. You certainly finished the match the stronger, but are there areas of that performance that you do feel need to be improved on? Always, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We lost our way for a little spell. Um, just before, uh, ten minutes before Hibs scored, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of lost our discipline and our shape a little bit. People were just running about uh, willy nilly, and uh, and, it, and it hurt us for a little while. But we did manage to get it uh, back together again. And um, you know, I thought uh, Stephen McLean made a difference when he when he came on, it calmed us down a little uh -huh. bit. Um, and uh, Ryan Edwards, who hasn't you know played an awful lot this season, he. Uh, he made a difference when he came on as well. And Uche Ikpezu, the man who got the goal for you, he seemed to offer everything in, in that match. And I guess that's just something that's part of his game, isn't it? Yeah, you just don't know what you're getting there. So, um, you know, he, he, uh, he would probably admit himself he didn't have his best game today, but he, you know, he kept plugging away, he kept trying. And, uh, and I was delighted for him. He gets another goal. Thank you for talking to us, Craig. Thanks. OK, thank you. See you soon. You don't know what you're going to get, but he almost scored the winner with an overhead kick. Yeah, I mean, I feel for the big man at times because, you know, because he's so strong, he, get, he gets, seems to get penalised a lot by referees. Uh, and a lot of the time, you know, he's just using his upper body strength. But, you know, you see, he has got qualities for, for such a big lad. And I was delighted, you know, as Craig says there, you know, he made me didn't have his best game today, but one thing about him, you get 100% effort every week. And, uh, and I was delighted to see him scoring, and then I was a wee bit unlucky there. What has the finish to this match done for Hearts' season? Well, hopefully that will give us a huge boost. And as, as uh, Craig says there, you know, it was a, a massive reaction for last week. 
in terms of, you know, when we went a goal behind last week, we, we capitulated. Whereas today, you know, we went a goal behind, but we stuck at it. You know, the boys showed their character. Uh, and as I say, Big Uchi getting us back in the game. Hopefully that will kick us on now between now and the cup final. OK, other side of it here is Paul Heckingbottom, also with Emma. Paul, you are 10 games unbeaten, but is that a bit bittersweet given the points dropped this afternoon? Yeah, we wanted all three courses, so... Yeah, but yeah, you, you get what you deserve, you know what I mean? Big moments. Um, coulda, shoulda, that's how it is. And uh, we get one in the end. Hearts obviously finished the stronger, but do you feel that you should have been further ahead at that point? Obviously there was the missed penalty. Yeah, we should have, but we weren't, we? so that's what I mean. You, you can't, can't begrudge that. We've, we've done well so far, as you say, still unbeaten, but it's one of them games where you probably don't get what you deserve. And, yeah, it weren't as good a derby game as the last one. We, we were well on top second half, you say, and, and could have run away with it. Um, they made tactical changes, but we just took us foot off the gas. And, yeah, we don't want to be like that, so it's a good learning thing for us. You made a change yourself at half-time. You brought Slavko on. Do you feel you had a, a better balance? Do you feel that had the impact that you were looking for in that second period? Yeah, because... <laughs> I had a feeling they might play that way with that shape and we knew where the space was but we weren't taking advantage of it first half. We were good on the counter, good if the first pass went forward um, but we didn't build and then exploit that space. Second, I was just yeah, natural players in, in a few more positions and, and, it, and it worked for us. At the end of the day, you're now four points behind Kilmarnock with three games still to play. Still a very realistic possibility of clinching that fourth place. Is that the, the feeling in the dressing room? Yeah, it is, but I think that's what we're more disappointed about. I think... Uh, We'd have, we'd have liked it to have been two and sort of in our hands, you know what I mean? So, but as I say, it's not, it's not, and we can see why, you know. We'd have, we'd have loved to have taken the chances and been out of sight and made the game comfortable, but we weren't. And then, while well, there's one goal in it, don't matter who you're playing, um, teams are dangerous. Thank you for talking to us. No problem. See you, soon. See you later. We are almost out of time. Plenty to tell you about IPL up next on BT Sport 3 Capitals against the Royal Challengers from the Hockey Pro League. Germany against Great Britain is right now on ESPN HD. Up next on BT Sport 1 and 4K UHD from the Gallagher Premiership. Worcester against Gloucester. More IPL cricket 3.30 on 3. The Knight Riders up against the Indians. And football from the Bundesliga. Nuremberg, Bayern Munich is 5 BT Sport 1. Guys, thank you very much indeed. Really enjoyed your company today. Honours even in the last Edinburgh Derby of the season. Hope you enjoyed our coverage. See you soon.